What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to part two of Rob and I's Ikoria set review. As usual, check out CoolStuffInc.com. They're a sponsor of the stream, and you can use promo code FRANK5 to get 5% off of your purchase. I have new articles that go up every Wednesday, so be sure to check then. And you can also go down to the link below, Rob, uh, <laughs> and, and check out ManaTraders.com. With the link and promo code, you'll get 20% off the first three months. They're also an awesome sponsor, and it's a great way to support the channel. They have great subscription services you can use to... Uh, to borrow Magic Online cards for modern, pioneer, standard, whatever your whatever your desire is, and uh, we're gonna get I'm, get to it. I'm excited. Today we're gonna do the red, the green, and the gold right now. How do you feel about that? Uh, I just want to let Kerwit know it's one. I could not eat two chickens. It's one chicken. The, <laughs> the gold also does include hybrid cards. So we did gold and we'll do hybrid. So those are our. All right, Blazing Volley. One mana, it deals one damage to each creature your opponent's control. This could be good. Could be bad. Yes. Yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty meta-dependent. It's very meta-dependent, right. You might say, if there's no meta with one with one toughness creatures, this card does not. Unplayable. Nothing. Right. Blister Spit Gremlin. Oh, is that your, is that your mom? <laughs> Huh. I have nothing. I have nothing. Okay. One mana for a 1-1. One, one. It deals one damage to each opponent if you pay one and tap it. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, untap it. This, this is guy a, spits hot fire. This is like a Thermo Alchemist, you know, cards like that. Except mm -hmm. the difference is you have to pay mana to tap this yeah, guy. Yeah, I hate that. That's rough. Because hate not it. only do I have to... I have to pay one and tap this, so it's one mana. Play a spell. Let's say it's a two mana spell. And then I untap this guy. And then I gotta pay one more mana. So for four... I have to pay four mana like in a turn to really take advantage of this guy twice. You know what I mean? And and realistically, you're only actually getting one extra point of damage across for the, all that mana that you invested. It's worth noting that you can mutate it. And if you mutate it, you do get to untap it when you cast spells, regardless of the first ability. Right. Ah. So like, that's, that's interesting. And also if there is a, another mutate card that where you tap to do something and this has an ability to untap it, like that's not bad. So let's keep our eyes out. Yeah, again, it's like it's it's an extremely it's a it's a creature that's that's more relevant based on its surroundings, let's say. Blitz of the Thunder Raptor. Look at this art. This is great. <laughs> Two this mana great. for an instant. Blitz of the Thunder Raptor deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. If that creature planeswalker would die, exile instead. This card seems good. This card seems really good. I mean, this is just like arc, arc like Phoenix dot deck, right? This is pretty good. This is really good. I mean, the fact that you can hit planeswalkers and creatures is very, very good. Um, and exiling is never irrelevant. So, yeah. This is this seems really good. I agree. Oh, see, this is the Thunder Raptor is chasing that little creature in front. I thought they were running side by side at first, and they. Were I friends. thought so too until you just yeah. said that now. That's that that was like oh these two are attacking these two are these are because this whole set has been about a, a, a bit about unlikely allies you know so I was like oh look at these friends these are wrong oh, he's the whole set guy. is always a giant monster behind the bigger monster there's always a bigger monster yes cathartic reunion yes he got out of the capture sphere their friendship is whole again oh. two mana as an additional cast uh, cost to to disc to just just dip zip dop dip doop dop dip dip bop bop and that's that. And that's our show. All right. <laughs> you know this card. Discard two, draw three. Like we've you know seen discard. Union. It's good. I mean, it, it obviously depends on the deck. But if you're playing the uh, the Arclight Phoenix deck with, with Blitz of the Thunder Raptor. Oh, hold on. I didn't do Fade again. Let me, let me do Fade on this one, too. Yeah, it was on Slide. Now we're going to go Fade. Yeah. If So if you're, if you're playing the... Um, yeah, look at that. The Cathartic Reunion deck with the Arclight Phoenixes, and you've got Blitz of Thunder after it's... I mean, it's going to go on the list, right? Oh, absolutely. This card this card right here revives the archetype of Arclight Phoenix. It's a sorcery, which we hate, but whatever. No, not for that. Not for Cathartic. Wasn't Cathartic Reunion already in the format? No. The Tormenting Voice, the Instant Speed Tormenting Voices. So before, it was a deck when you had Tormenting Voice and Cathartic, then Cathartic and Tormenting oh, Cycle Oh, yeah, out. I guess it was the last time was uh was uh, Kaladesh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Clash of the Titans. Five mana. 
See, it's so funny. The way I evaluate cards, I can look at a card and I'm like, five mana, that's a lot. Let's check the rarity. If it's a rare five mana card, I'm like, it could be good. If it's a common five mana card, it's trash, right? <laughs> it's straight trash. And if it's, a, if it's an uncommon five mana card, it could go either way. Target creature fights another target creature. It's not constructible. But it is strong. It is strong. not constructible. It is strong because, like, in Limited, you just have their two creatures fight, right? Yep. The problem is, unless they're equal, exactly equal... Only one dies. It's only going to kill one creature. Yeah. One thing you can do, if they have a 4-4 four, four and a 5-5, five, five, they attack with both. You block the 5-5. Five, five. You have the 4-4 four, four, fight, the 5-5. Five, five, the, the, the problem is it's very situational, right? And for 5 mana, it's a lot. That's the sucky. It's not great. Cloud Piercer. My horn can pierce the sky. That's an office meme. 5-4 five, oh. for 5 with reach. Whenever this creature mutates, you may discard a card if you draw a card. This is bad, too. It's not great. It's it's your it's your it's your mutate filler. That's it's fine. not great, Bob. Not great, but I don't have those on here right now. Not That's great, right. Bob. Dranith Stinger, two mana for a two two. Whenever you cycle another card, it deals one damage to each opponent. I mean, this is kind of like the same as the one one. It gains you one life every time you cycle a card, right? It's the same card. Yeah, but I like this. I like the one that makes human tokens better. This is more spell based, right? So, I mean, like, in a red deck that's just trying to deal a bunch of damage and cycle a bunch of cards, like, this could add up. Maybe. I mean, look at, think of, like, Vyashino Pyromancer, right? Like, that guy comes into play, deals two damage, right? So if you cycle two cards while this is in play, it's basically the same. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right? Yeah, so, I like, mean... I mean, how, what's the what's the price on this? How much damage... Like, in the, on the white one, you can't look at how much life can you gain with this before it's worth it, because it's just a 2-2 in a white deck, but... A 2-2 in a red deck that deals a couple incremental points is really all the red deck wants to do anyway. Yeah, but I don't think that... Um, if this was any target, it'd be rare. <laughs> this would be a totally different card. I think I, I, I don't think that you can compare this to the Pyromancer because the Pyromancer was actually only put in the deck because... The oh, Vashino Pyromancer. Vashino, right. Because it turned, on, it turned on Wizard's Lightning. There's already a card in standard okay, that's, that's a 2-mana 2-1. Two 2-mana two one, two 2-1 two that when it dies deals 2 damage to target... Um, planeswalker or player? I'm gonna go to the next one. Yeah, it's you like sold me. I don't think it's great. I was just trying to. I was just trying to argue, man. Oh, that with Torbrand is interesting, though. That oh, that's, that's see, true. Oh, now you're talking. It deals that's three true. damage to each opponent every time. Like you could just play Torbrand, untap, and be like, cycle, 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 take nine. Cycle, 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 Michael. <laughs> take nine. Cycle, cycle, cycle on your bicycle, Michael. <laughs> I'm gonna put it down now because of that. Maybe that's a big, that's it's a big game. To put it dude. on the list. Like if you have a bunch of cards that cycle for one, you just deal like nine damage. Like that's nuts. Yeah. Okay. Everquill Phoenix four mana for a four four Phoenix mutates for four. Whenever this creature mutates, create a red artifact creature named Feather. With one sacrifice Feather, return a Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So this is nice because as long as you can resolve the mutate. And get the feather. Even if they kill your combination creature, you can still get your phoenix back. I don't like it. The problem is, it's a, it's one of the few phoenixes, if any, that need another creature to really do anything. You know what I mean? Like otherwise, yeah. it's not a phoenix. It's just a thunder break regent that doesn't have that. I don't know. Don't this, forget I... though, you could play this first, then mutate something on top of. No, that would have to have mutate too, right? Yeah. This um I. <sighs> I feel like Rekindling Phoenix was an amazing card, and this is just like Still a very, is. very poor man's Re Rekindling Phoenix. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I don't is think Rekindling this Phoenix alone... rare or mythic. Rekindling was mythic. Are you sure? I remember because it was expensive. It was a twenty dollars card. You know? I do remember that. It was mythic. You're right. Yeah, I think this card is fine, but not great. Like, I think it's it's just a card where I look at you look at cards like this, and you're like, how much has to go right? For this to really be at its best, you know, and I think it's again, if mutate is easier than it seems to be, then maybe it's good, you know. If if mutate is a real thing and it's something that you're doing multiple times a game, every game, it's that normal, then then it's maybe pretty darn right, good. Right, that's the thing. That's that's the other thing, right? Like, what if you? What is about the flavor of of mutating this onto a, a mysterious egg? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> Because it's a chicken and it's an egg. Because it hatched. Yeah, that's right. That's the that's that. Yeah, 
Ferocious Tiger Gorilla. God, a cat ape. This Rah. fucking creature type is cat ape. Four mana. Good lord, man. Four mana for a four three. I'm like, oh, it's a common. It's not going to be good. Enters the battlefield with your choice of a trample or a menace counter on it. No, it's good and limited, but you're not going to play this for four. You're not going to be like questing beast, and then your opponent's going to be like ferocious tiger gorilla, <laughs> and you're like, all right, you got it. Uh, I will say this about that card though: is if you were like, if if you you called me like it's 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 two in the morning, and for some reason Frank is Facebook calling me, and I'm like, what the hell is wrong with Frank? Why is he calling me? That's you. Excuse me. Thank you. Okay. And then you were like, dude, I didn't know who to call. I had to call somebody. I just had this crazy nightmare, and I was being attacked by a cat ape and i would be like that's terrifying i still wouldn't envision it to be as scary as this art looks i'm gonna eat a cheeto right now that was as far as i was going with what i was saying i, I just want to let you know that the, the art on this is a lot more terrifying than the creature type of cat ape or so you thought so i thought <laughs> fire prophecy two mana for an instant it deals three damage to target creature so not a player you may put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library if you do draw a card. That's interesting. This card is so good. It's just a three mana. It's just a three mana removal spell or two mana three damage removal spell that also lets you essentially essentially loot. Right. It doesn't put it in your graveyard, which is interesting because it's kind of like it doesn't want you to just toss an arc like phoenix into the graveyard when you kill their thing. I guess I think that would be dumb. Yeah, I think this would be actually too strong if if you could just discard if you just literally looted. Yeah. This card is this card is so good yeah, to me. This, this, card's this card's really good. good. This card's really yeah. good. Yeah. I mean the fact that you can put cards back into your library that you didn't want to draw. Have you ever gone outside and got to call on the cat ape? <laughs> Have you ever gone outside and got to call on the cat ape? Also, <laughs> like, I mean, it is an instant, right? And they and there's there's definite there's a definite argument that they could have just made it sorcery, so I mean, all the creatures are castable at instant, and all the uh, everything that's not a creature is yeah. Just let me right, speed. Just let me cast it at instant, man. <laughs> Flame spill. Oh, this is awkward. That kid's probably dead. Let's be real. Three mana. <laughs> Flame spill deals four damage to target creature. Excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller. Th just put trample on the spell, right? I, like how I much? Don't th I don't think they can do that. How much cooler would the why they put lifelink on spells? That's true. You're right. Yeah, I mean, like, you could... Do, as soon as you do it, it's done, and you just translate what that means to people. Yeah. Flame spill, Trample. Flame spill does four damage to target creature. And then you know, if it's a 3-3, three, three, the excess goes to the player. It's just Trample. Excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller. Cool cool design. I don't think it's, I don't think it's good enough. Really? Three mana, four damage? Mm -hmm. Maybe in a sideboard card in um, Red Mirrors mm -hmm. for, for a mono red deck. But it has to have a target... It's three mana, three mana to deal four damage. Like, ah, uh, I don't think it would have to be in a mono red deck, and it's a sideboard card that that comes in and kills a human and deals Why damage. Why would it have to be piece. in a mono red deck though? Well, I, I didn't. I guess I shouldn't say mono red. An aggro, an, an aggro deck. It's an aggro I mean, deck. This is, this is a spell mirror. that kills questing questing beast for three, right? I mean. What else deals four damage we, right now in red? What's the other four? Can damage we get a questing spell? beast counter in the top right? Can we? Is that something you can whip up real quick, dude? I think it's the I think it's the most relevant creature in standard right now, right? Like, yeah, I got beat. I told you I lost the gruels uh, five out of six times. It yeah. was because of freaking questing questing beast. Questing beast. It's questing cresting, guys. Yeah. Lava coil, right? Lava coil, sure, but it's red cat melee. I don't I don't think red cat melee counts. Lava as much, coil is like. a sorcery, and it's only one one mana. But also, like, the upside of being able to, like, deal this damage to the face. I mean, well, if, they have a, if they have, if they have like, a 1-1 one, one and you need to deal 3, like, you could just yeah. you could just choose their smallest guy and deal the extra damage. That's why I'm saying this is not a main deck card, I don't think. This can't be a main I'm deck card. It it's I literally it's, dead. I think, it's I think you could put it on the list because it's going to see play. I just don't think Shut it's and take my money. a main deckable card. One questing buck. Curry, <laughs> can you donate one dollar every time we say que every time questing beast? Not not every time we say it, because that would just that would encourage us He'd to say it. Broke. Right. But like every time we relevantly mention it, because that would be that would help. Footfall crater. One red. Enchant land. Enchant land has target creature gains trample and haste until end of turn. Mm. This is interesting. It's an interesting card, but I don't I don't think it's any good. It forces you to play off curve, which is always awkward. Yeah. Especially in like the deck you want this in, right? Like that's Shut like Shut up and take my money. No. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Okay. Kurt's like, I can't donate a dollar every time you say it, but I will just send you uh, $45 in food later anyway. So, uh, Forbidden Friendship, one and a red. Create a 1-1 one, one red dinosaur creature token with haste and a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. This is your tinko, typical Krenko's command. He should have lifelink or something. Wow. Why does the dinosaur get haste, but he he gets nothing? Because uh, dinosaurs are fast and human beings are slow. Uh, last time I checked, not all dinos are fast. Maybe the one in the fucking card is, Rob. It's Stop. not even a dinosaur. Look at it. It's a merfolk. Okay. I'm going to... This is card good, though? No. Really? Krenko's command like cards like raising oh, like... wait. This tur this turns on the cards that say human non human. It also turns on uh Blitz of the Thunder Raptor because it's another it's another sorcery in your graveyard. I don't know what the hell you just said. What card is that? Blitz of the Thunder Raptor, the one that deals X damage to a uh, a planeswalker or a creature where X is the number of sorceries and in instants oh. in your graveyard. Yeah, whatever. That's true. This could see play. We've I, again. I've, we've seen. I think we've seen a Jess guy. I think there's a Jess guy aggro deck here somewhere. Whatever, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Frenzy to Raptor. Three mana for a four two. Go on. At least it doesn't kill itself when um, it ETBs, right? <laughs> it's better than Flame Tongue. Yeah, it's better. It's clearly just a strictly better Flame Tongue. Frill Scare Mentor. This is just a red Mentor. Three mana for a three two. Uh, put a menace counter and put a one one counter on each creature with menace. So <clears throat> it's still not constructively able, but yeah. You know, right. These are boop. I think this card is pretty good. It is main deck. Main, uh, Katie, were you referring to flame spill? Uh, go for blood. Two mana. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. This card seems fine. Like the fight cards are regular standard playable cards, and this one has cycling. I don't you think know. they're playable. Really? It's cool to see it in Maybe red, though. Maybe they're not. You're right. Okay. Like, Prey Upon, Prey Upon was one mana. You never saw Prey Upon played. That's true. That's true. Heightened Reflexes, one mana. Target creature gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Put a first strike counter on it. Good good trick in limited, for sure. I feel like cards like this do sometimes seem standard play. But I think not just... plus one, plus zero. No, so and also not. not on one dude. Like, usually it's like coordinated strike. And yeah. also you want, like, heroic abilities to trigger, you know? Which we don't have, right? There's no like heroic esque abilities. Yes, in standard. there is. Um, Hero of the Nixborn. Hero of the is Nixborn. the one 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 Boros colored dude that makes a one one token when he ETBs. Okay. And there's a couple of cards that when you target them, they give they anthem the rest of your team. Hmm. Oh, this is interesting in in the feather deck, yeah, because you just get to keep putting first strike counters on a bunch of different guys. Yeah, I'd rather pay one, give pump something one zero, -oh, and then draw a card, but. Yeah, I guess that's true. I think yeah. it just depends on whether you like card advantage or first strike. When your guys probably aren't getting blocked that frequently. Anyway. Yeah, I don't think I don't think this is better than anything we have access to already. Five five for six with haste, cycling two. All right, that's cool. This should have cost five. Look at this fucking look at this art though, man. That serpent is just jumping out of the lava. How does it even exist in there? It looked like you took a mouthful of lava on his way up. Yeah, don't we all? Our first planeswalker. Ooh, that's exciting. Lucka. Copper Coat Look Outcast. Five mana for a five loyalty planeswalker. Plus one. Exile the top three cards of your library. Creature cards exiled this way again. You may cast this card from exile as long as you control this guy. A Lucka planeswalker. Oh, the cards get that. So even if this one dies and then like a different a different version of this card was printed, like you can play a different Lucka. And still cast those cards because they gained that. That's interesting. Right. I'm gonna be a pain because uh, it's on. Um, since I'm looking at a, a smaller screen, can you right. can you reread that the plus one for me one more time? So I exile the top three cards of your library. Mm -hmm. Creature cards exiled this way gain. You may cast this card from exile as long as you control a Lucka Planeswalker. Okay. So any Lucka Planeswalker, they gain the ability forever that you can cast them. That's that's really good. I agree. I think that's because like good. even six turns later, if you play a different copy of this card, uh, you could those those cards are now accessible to you again. Yeah. On turn six, you literally just saw six extra cards to cast creature spells in yeah, your five. In your, you do in your one, deck. six. You do two. Yeah. Yeah. And like plus, like you get to just keep choosing. You don't have to choose any at that given time. Like unlike Vivian Reed, it's like put a, put one in your hand. I get to choose one, and the rest are gone. This, like, yeah. just keeps all... Like, if you hit, like, four creatures in the top six, they're all accessible to you over the next the next few turns, you know? 
Yeah, this is that was a really good effect. What's number neg two? Negative two. Exile target creature you control, then reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with the higher with a higher converted mana cost. So if you exile a five drop, you get to keep going until you find six plus. Uh, put that card on the battlefield and the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. So the negative two is Thanks. kind of like a birthing pod esque effect, right? This is pretty sweet. So if you if you only have like one or two specific six or seven drops in the deck, like when you sack a four or five drop, your odds are decent to hit that. You know, what I, mean? I like it. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, yeah, this this card seems good so far. Like the negative two and the plus <clears throat> one both seem very very good. Negative seven. Each creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. Wow, that's that's not bad. No. Especially I mean, when you... That's probably like 10 damage at least. Yeah, that's especially when turn turn 5 you saw 3 cards, turn 6 you saw 3 cards. And this guy's presumably in like a... a, a you're probably going to have right, a, right. a, a concert... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a... a concentration. Now, concentra I'm looking for the, something mass, right? Like a, a something mass of creatures, right? What's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of the word. Critical. Critical mass of creatures, correct. Yeah. Like you're... Yeah, that was good. That was good. Yeah, this card seems great. I'm going to write it down. <laughs> you're really uh you're you're really you're really doing it copper coat outcast momentum rumbler four mana for a three three okay so you got to be good man whenever it attacks if it doesn't have first strike put a first strike counter on it whenever it attacks if it has first strike it gains double strike interesting wait so whenever it attacks if it doesn't have first strike put a first strike counter on it okay oh it's a dino so after your first attack, it has first strike. Whenever it attacks, if it has first strike, it gets double strike. So it's it's a stair step. It gets it gets first strike when it attacks, then it gets double. But it's not gonna have double to the second attack, right? Correct. Yeah, because it'll get a first strike counter when it attacks. Wait, no, and then no, the no. Hold on. Can't you trigger both of these and stack them in the way that like? Okay, so whenever it attacks. If it has first strike, if it doesn't have first strike, right? You put them on the... Well, put them like this. So this one resolves. It gets a first strike counter. This one tries to resolve. It says whenever it attacks, if it has first strike, it does. It I get what you're saying, strike. but I don't think both trigger. I think I think it reads whenever Momentum Rumbler attacks, if that would it doesn't make sense have because first it's strike... About, because the card is flavored as to be Momentum. Yeah. Okay. That makes I sense. I will say this. Um... I'm curious to look at more dinosaurs because of this card and because of we still have the uh, two drop raptor that gives your dinosaurs haste. It, Katie says it looks at what it has when it attacks. God dang it. So smart. Yeah. Did you hear what I said about the dino? I wasn't listening. Okay. Well, you well okay. you should be listening. <laughs> okay. Fine. Because we played, we played that Iron Crag feet deck and that little dino oh, kicked butt for us. The the dino that's like a two, a one two or a two two or two Boros three, Reckoner. huh? Boros Reckoner. No, the dino that whenever another dinosaur enters the battlefield, it deals two captain. damage to it. True fire captain. Huh? True fire. Boros Reckoner. I know what you're doing now. It's a marauding raptor. Yeah, marauding raptor. That's what I said. What about him? <laughs> It, it seems like it pairs very well with this card, giving it haste, and the second turn it gets double strike. Well, Katie's a judge, so I'm definitely going to default to her on most most judge decisions. So, What's your point, though? What, this guy? What? What does this guy have to do with the fucking Marauding Raptor is my question. Because this is something that if I play on turn four, if I'm playing just a 3-3, three, three, uh -huh. turn five, I'm attacking just to give it first strike. I think it gets much more explosive if on turn three, on turn four, it's attacking with haste already a three three first striker, and then on turn five when it's attacking, it becomes a three three double strike. Does Marauding Raptor give haste? If it deals damage dinosaur? to a dino, I thought. Whenever another creature enters battlefield under your control, it deals two damage to it. If a dinosaur is dealt damage, Marauding Raptor gets plus two plus so. No, it doesn't give. It doesn't give haste. It okay, does. Never... It does let it cost one less. Never so you mind. can still play Momentum Rumbler on three, but then yep. it's not it's not gonna get first it's not gonna get double strike until turn five, right? You attack on four for first strike, attack on five for double strike. This is nice. This is a nice feature, man. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I'm oh just running out of this couple options. Mythos of Vedrock. Okay, so this is the Jeskai mythos. Four mana, uh two red red. 
Mythos, it deals five damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers. I like that so far. That's good. If Jeskai mana was spent to cast it, so again, blue, white, red, red. Uh, until your next turn, those permanents can attack or block and their activated abilities can't be used. Until your next turn. So I do it on my turn four. Uh, they can't use it when it goes to their turn. It comes back to my turn five. And then they can't use it. That's actually pretty good. I think this is only good because of the Jeskai. Really? Four mana think sorcery just, yeah, think four just mana dividing sorcery five speed? damage? A bunch of, a bunch of things? Oh, I'd rather just cast Storm's Wrath or... What if you're trying to deal with Planeswalkers, though? It deals four damage to Planeswalkers. What if you try to deal with a five loads of Planeswalkers? <laughs> <laughs> then you're doing. Then you're pinging it for one damage, and then they can't activate it for a turn, and it still has four loyalty. I think this card is kind of Meg. Shut up, Meg. Uh, if wait until the end, of those permits can't attack or block. Uh, wait. Yeah. So if they have Nissa lands that are three threes, they can't use those for mana. Eh. And they you're can't probably, uptick Nissa make another. You're probably move. already losing if you're if you're using this four mana card on three 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 Nissa lands. I think five five damage is just not enough for four mana. Mm -hmm. It should be probably closer to fourteen or eighteen something around there. Damage. <laughs> <laughs> if this is, I mean, at least twelve. Twelve is like the the, the bottom. That's like that's like where my baseline is. It's yeah. gonna be, I think is that the first mythos we didn't put on. Probably. Um, no, the white mythos wasn't great either, right? White? What do you mean white? Was there not a white? Oh no, no, yeah, the single combat one was no good. No. The oh Barbie yeah, because it was kind of it is yeah, it was catastrophic, cataclysmic gear Hulk. <laughs> single combat. <laughs> what Katie said, unless another creature grants it first strike. Oh the the dino the dino right. would attack with double strike. Oh yeah, because then it would yeah that's true. That's just a way to cheat it. Yeah. I don't think another creature is doing that though. Porcu parrot. This is a literal porcupine parrot. This is a bird beast. This set is basically just unstable uh, as a standard set, That's right? Cool. As a construction set. I miss set. unstable. Dude, that, remember, do you remember our unstable? We had so much fun. Four mana for a 3-4. Uh, you mutate it for three. This creature does X damage to any creature where X is the number of times this creature is mutated. Nah. So in order to tell the number of times it's mutated, you take the number of creatures total and then just subtract one, right? Like... Because if you have three creatures, they've mutated yes, twice. That'd be correct, right? Yep. So this is no, no, I don't think so. I mean, this is mm -hmm. strong and limited, but it's just the problem is like it's a three four for four mana by itself, which is not good enough. And like a three four going on top of I don't know, man, mutates so hard to process for me. Wait, can you go back to that last card real quick? Okay, I did. So some somebody's <laughs> I went real someone quick. said this was death touch. To any, oh yeah, because it's any target. That's that's true. If you well, put sure. a death so touch counter on it, if we got a mutate, or we can mutate into a death toucher, right? Yeah. There's a lot of true. That's what I mean. Like, there's so much to consider. It's so much yeah. going on. Um, so this guy, prickly marmoset, three mana for a two three. There's so many three mana cards in this set. Uh, whenever you cycle a card, it gets plus o oh, plus two. This is this is literally just the like the there's a wolf that does this right. A 2-3 that gets plus 2. Brazen Wolves? Is it Brazen Wolves? Brazen Wolves? Brazen Wolves sounds like a 4-3. Uh, Brazen Wolves is a 2-3 for 3. Whenever it attacks, it gets plus 2 plus so. This yeah, requires you to cycle a card, but it also has first strike, so, you know. So it's better than the dinosaur. <laughs> I mean, as long as you're cycling. <laughs> uh, Pyroceratops. 4 mana for a 2-3. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. It's got trample. That's relevant. We've seen this card before, though. Yeah, there's there's some. It's already in standard. Uh, Gorger spell spell something. Gorger spell mouth. Spell yeah, type mouth. type in spell and see if you can find uh, it. Spell Gorger weird two two for three. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. But there was also this one in. Uh, it's like a hound, right? Uh, there's also a four mana one that does the same thing. I thought. I'm pretty sure. Pyro Hound. Pyroceratops. 2 3 for 4. Trample. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, uh, put a 1 1 counter on Pyro Hound. It's the same card. It's, it's the same card. It's the exact same card. That's it's stupid. A, and even Pyro Hound is an elemental hound. This is an elemental dinosaur. They're just like, what if we just took Pyro Hound and made it a dinosaur? And then you're like, all right, cool. Raking Claws. Target creature gains double strike until end of turn. So this card's just better than the dinosaur. <laughs> yes. 
Because you can it's, cycle it. It's also... It's kind of... It has a lot of teamer battle... Well, rage. of course you're going to... Yeah, but it doesn't give trample. That's the big deal. Right, but can you can cycle it, so... You can. All right. Raking Claw's not going on the list, though, right? I don't think it's that. No. Cool. The trample, really. Reptilian Reflection. Look at this art, man. This is That's a... crazy. Whenever you... All right, so it's a, it's a three-mana enchantment, which is not normal. Usually, I expect these these enchantments to be, like, six-mana. Whenever you cycle a card, you may have Reptilian Reflection become a 5-4 Dinosaur with Trample and Haste in addition to other types until end of turn. Too expensive. Not only is it too expensive, like, it requires me to consistently do things over and over and over for this to be valuable. As soon as I run over those things, run out of those things, I've also run out of value for this card. Yeah, the thing about those, generally, though, some, like, like think vehicles. Like, sometimes there's, it's not a bad thing that you, that they turn off because they dodge board wipes, things like that, too, so. That's true. That's true. The art, the art in this remind re reminds me of uh, the art from Bloodlust. The colors for some reason reminds me. You can also cycle it at instant speed to block. So I mean, like it definitely has use. To... Yeah. I mean, this is just a typical like blue. This is typically a blue card, right? Where you have an enchantment that does a certain that turns into a creature if you do a certain thing. Yeah. Rooting Moloch, five <laughs> mana for a four four, uncommon. Maybe it's good. When it enters the battlefield, exile a card with a cycling ability from your graveyard until the end of your next turn. You may play that card. draws you a card it's not great it's just too much i don't want to be drawing a card for five mana that's true well you still got a four four out of it. it's not like you're just drawing the card that's crap that's that's that and nowadays, it cycles that's robert crap. rumbling rock slide four mana rumbling rock slide deals damage to target creature equal to the number of lands you control so this is mostly going to deal four damage right like that's going to yeah. be your pretty much your default i would imagine right okay i'm just gonna keep going no, I said, yeah, the first time when you were saying it, you know? <laughs> no, I agreed. Four damage. I got it. Sanctuary Smasher. Six mana for a 6-4 with first strike. There you go. You cycle this, and it attacks on turn five, and has double striker. It's already attacking on turn five with double striker because of the Mara. No, it's, no it's not. It doesn't give it haste. Right, because Marauding Raptor, you play on two. Then you play your guy on three. It attacks oh, yeah. with first strike right. on four. It attacks with double strike on five. Can you rewind it's, the tape? I don't care anymore. Shredded <laughs> sails. Two mana. Choose one. Destroy an artifact or it deals four damage to dark creature with flying. Oh, I like this. I'm on. You don't like this? I mean, it's flexible, right? It's it's just. That's is, why I'm saying. Is there application? I, I I like it. I think it's okay. Well, this and... is like a this is like a red crushing canopy, right? Destroy an enchantment or destroy a flyer. Oh, cool. Yeah, I like that. And yeah, it I cycles, think, so it's yeah. just better. Oh, yeah, and the cycling is just gravy, right? It's just the versatility on a card like this. It's good. I love gravy. It's the same reason the white card is good, right? It's deal four damage instead of instead of gain four life, and it's destroy an artifact instead of an enchantment. I like Spell it. Spell Eater Wolverine. Jeez. Wolverine. Three mana for a three, two. Spell Eater Wolverine has double strike as long as there are three or more instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard. You're not going to play this for three mana. You're not going to play a 3-2 for three. Like, it's just never happening. Tentative Connection. Uh, four mana. This spell costs three less if you control a creature with Menace. That's interesting. Gain control of a creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste. That's, that's weird. Like, a Menace creature is really, like, a specific thing. Is this just already... your... Isn't there already a creature in the um, Bractos decks that has Menace? Bractos? Yeah, the Bractos Sacrifice decks. I'm trying to think. Is there a card with Menace, or am I confusing it with something else? Stormfist. Uh, oh, Storm Seder, but that's yeah. not in the that's not in those sacrifice decks. No. I, I was thinking if this is just better does than Claim Judith, the Firstborn. Does Judith have Menace? Judith isn't even in those decks, but no, she doesn't. I don't know, man. I don't play. Yeah. I don't play. I don't, I don't, I don't really play those. Kind I don't of play things. cards, man. I just review them. I don't play them. I just I look at yeah, them. Yeah, this is just your typical three mana or four mana uh, active treason effect with mm -hmm. a with a modifier on it. Like this is like it costs one mana if you have a Menace creature. Yeah. Unpredictable Cyclone. I have not seen this card. It's five mana for an enchantment. There it is. There's your typical five to six mana rare red enchantment. If a cycling ability of another non land card, non land card, that's weird, would cause you to draw a card, which they always do because that's how cycling works. Instead, what? X, what? Hold on. If a cycling ability of another non land card would cause you to draw a card. They're just saying it like that because in case it's in like case you have like Leovold out, right? And you try to cycle during your turn and you can't draw a second card. So it's just saying like 
as long as you draw the card. So Narset, if Narset's out. Correct. During your turn, okay. right. It's okay, just keep... it's just a way to get around that. Keep going. Instead, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a card that shares a card type with a cycled card. So if I oh that's why it's not land. So if I cycle an instant, I exile cards until I find an instant. I can cast that card without paying its mana cost, then put the exile cards that weren't what if you just only put um That's interesting. There's gotta be ways to build around this. Like so, there's gotta be small creatures you can you can have huge creatures. Well, I guess you could cycle into your small creatures again. That's the problem, uh, right? That's the problem, right? Mm -hmm. You're because I was gonna say I was thinking cruel ultimatum, like you could just have a bunch of sorceries that cycle and try to hit a cruel ultimatum. But the problem is this costs five already, right? So like yeah. You're already paying five. I might as well just pay the two more for Cruel Ultimatum or just cast the creature that I want. You know? Oh, interesting. So if you have this in the battlefield and you cy if you cycle the Sharknado, right. you can hit another unpredictable Cyclone. And the next time you get two triggers. That's cool. <laughs> this is cool. I'm going to go to the next one. I don't think it's, I don't think it's playable. No, I don't either. No. I mean, someone will probably break this in, like, Commander or some bullshit, but... Yeah. Weaponize the monsters. <laughs> wow, that sounds terrible. <laughs> These are not monsters. These are friends, okay? One red for an enchantment. Interesting. Two and sacrifice a creature. Weaponize the monsters. Deals two damage to any target. So it doesn't say non-token. Mm -hmm. It's repeatable. Mm -hmm. It's one man. I mean, it's it's interesting, right? Like, if they try to kill your guy, sack it, deal two to any target. If, any target is nice. If there's a red white token deck, yeah, this could add up. That yeah. Yeah. The problem is it's bad in multiples. Not I wish I had cycling. The first one. What? I wish I had flash. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I mean everything else does, right? Like this is a weird <laughs> Yadaro wandering monster dinosaur turtle. Oh yeah, we did it. We did Jesus. it, boys. Seven mana for an 8-8. Eight, eight. Oh, God, you're never going to hard cast this. And you won't have to. Trample and haste, which is pretty sweet. I like that. 8-8, eight, eight, trample, haste. Cycling, one and a red. Okay. I like it. I'm already on board. When you cycle Yadara Wandering Monster, shuffle it into your library from your graveyard. So when you cycle it, you're just shuffling it in, drawing a card. Uh, if you've cycled a card named Yadara Wandering Monster four or more times this game, put it onto the battlefield from your graveyard instead. I love this card. Four is too many. I don't care. You're just gonna keep cycling it. It's it not... becomes playable at three. I think. I think this is playable. I think it becomes real good at three. If you have two of these in your opening hand, you just need to draw one, and uh, like but, get an eighty I mean, trample haste. Like this is a big creature, dude. It's a fine line between playable and not playable. I guess. I think. I think four is too many. Okay, like, but you're here's doing the thing. nothing on those. Listen turns. to me. Listen to me, Robert. Sorry. You cycle the fourth time. You get it for free. It comes into play, right? Every future one you get, you just get to cycle at instant speed. And it speed. dies. What? How? It comes into play. It's legendary. No, I'm saying if they kill your 8-8, the first one oh, you play, yeah. you kill it, right? Yeah. Every future one you draw, which should be three because they all get shuffled back in, they're all just two mana 8-8s that draw you a card when they come into play. Again, that's really good. Here's my problem. It doesn't Turn one, I do nothing. Least. Turn two, I cycle this. I do nothing. Turn three, I cycle this. I do nothing. Turn four, I cycle this. I do nothing. But turn about, five. What do you mean? Turn, turn what, Okay, no, but that's not a. That's not how any game plays out ever. And like but, you're but, already play to historically control decks, which this is probably going to go into because you're it's, it's seven mana eight eight. Like those decks are already playing things like think twice. You know, like I mean, historically you have time to do this. You're not gonna you're not gonna have to do this on turn two, three, four, five, and then attack on turn five, which you could yeah, because it has trample my point and haste. Was, my point was you take you you can, it can take you. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm I'm wrong. But you're like you're thinking of you feel like this is because I think it's a red card that you're thinking like it has to be really done really quickly, but it doesn't. Like it's just a really like. There's gonna throw be a in turn. a just guy. Throw in a just guy deck. You're right. Throw in a just guy control. I mean, you're right. You're right. But the 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 scary part about it though is is it probably has to be a four of. Oh, it does for sure. But like then at that point it's just like a thing twice kind of like effect. Like you're always gonna cycle it, and your goal is to get it for free, right? But like and it can and it can be countered. That's true too. Yeah, yeah. You're you're right. You're right. I can see it. I'm seeing it. Put it on the list. Put it at the top. 
I played Dream Trawler over this in Jessica. Well, yeah, thankfully, thankfully, you don't have to actually choose. You can play multiple cards in the same deck. They allow a 60 card minimum. So if you have more than one card you'd like to play, you can put them in there. You can put whatever you want in there. Guess what? What's that? This card gets you a card before Dream Trawler does. Like, I almost look at this as a spell instead of a creature, right? Like, it's a spell that just says draw, draw one. But also, like... If you play this when you have Dream Trawler out, it gets plus one plus zero, oh, my dude. So here's the funny thing, actually. I'm gonna I, now that I'm like thinking of applications for this deck. If you're in a Jeskai control deck, I think this is better than Dream Trawler because when you have two of these in your hand for turns two, three, four, five before you can even cast a single you, one, they just don't clog up your hand the way they a don't six clog mana up your hand. Dream Trawler, okay, yeah. right. And then here's another thought. It's got trample, so it's not like it can be chumped. A lot of times you get cards like these and they're like 8-8 eight, eight haste, but they don't they could just be chumped. This card draws you a card, the turn it comes into play, and it attacks for eight damage and kills a planeswalker. So the thing about this card is also every time you every time it's on the battlefield, you drew a card, right? You're never casting this. Right. The fourth time you cycle this, you're still drawing a card. It's always replacing itself. When this finally triggers because you've cycled it four times, it's a free card. I honestly think it's this may be better than Dream every Trawler. time. I think this may be better than Dream Trawler. I think it's good. I think, I think the card is very, very good. I think Lifelink is the literal only thing that makes me stop and say this is not 100% better than Dream Trawler. But I really think this card may be better than Dream Trawler. Like, like, can you... can? I, I didn't see who said it in chat. Oh, and that's I'm not true. And like, in the is it decks that are like, when you draw your second card this turn, do X. Like, yeah. this, this helps with that for sure. Whoever it was in chat, I don't know who it was, but can you give me a reason as to why you think Dream Trawler is better? I'm not saying you're wrong, but I, I, I'm trying to fi I'm trying to find a way that Dream Trawler is better than this. <coughs> I mean, the life link and it flies, like that's it. But like flying is but just flying... a form of evasion, the same way eight eight trample is, right? Trample, like, yeah, right. Like an eight eight trampler does essentially have invasion, right? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I think. Um, I mean, this card races. This card races. Uh, this has no protection. I mean, but it's free. It's a free card. It replaces itself, right? Like, it doesn't need to have protection. You're just you're, if your opponent kills it, it's, they've spent a card, and you've got you've you've spent none. Like, yeah, it's also instant speed, right? Like at the end of their turn, I can be like, flash this guy in, right? I mean, I don't know. Like, you guys are naming things that make Dream Trawler good, but you're not. I don't think they're necessarily better. Than this. This also can't be countered. Dream Trawler gets countered really easily. Um, you get to also play Dream Trawler and they go Shelter the Sun on their next turn, and you never get anything out of your Dream Trawler. If I cycle this at the end of their turn and then attack with them immediately, like there's a lot of things that are th this is also two mana. So if I have the same five mana that, that a Dream Trawler needs, I can just counter the removal spell on the next turn. You know, like this has a lot of benefits. Rob, you still there? You haven't said anything and uh just want to make sure you're not lagging or I think Rob is dying. Is Rob saying something in the chat? Is he trying to communicate? Robert, are you that Robert, can you hear me? Oh, he said lagging. Give me a sec. Okay. So Yodara Wandering Monster seems great. I would love it. And now oh, I think on... I'm back now. Oh, that was good. God, that was an emotional roller coaster. I'm Dude, I, it's crazy because I wanted to hear everything that you just said. Did you hear? Did you, were you able to hear me? <laughs> no, because what happens when I, the couple times I lag, it, it's like, uh, uh, uh. Well, I made the point that, like, this costs two mana, whereas Dream Trawler costs six. If you cycle this at the end of their turn, you get an attack where Dream Trawler never will because it doesn't have haste. And they could just go Shelter the Suns. Um, is that what it's called? Shelter the Sun? Swelter? Mm. Swelter? Sweltering Suns? What? S Shelter the, the 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 sweeper that deal that kills everything for four mana. They draw a card if they if they have a shatter creature. the sun. Shatter the sun. Or shatter shatter something. Yeah, shatter the skies. There it is. Shatter the yeah. skies. Yeah, like yeah. If you go dream trawler on six, they get to untap it, go shatter, and then you get nothing out of your guy. Um, whereas like if I end of your turn, I go cycle this, put an eight eight into play. I still get to attack your planeswalker. I get to deal you eight because it costs two instead of six. I also get to keep up a counter spell if I'm playing them. And yeah. I can just counter your removal spell anyway, which is that yeah, I seems think, like I, I, I think I, I think you sold me on that card. That I mostly, card actually seems really good. Uh, Tefri also, yeah. If they have a Tefri out, I can just cycle this guy into turn, get him into play. Like I, I, you guys were naming pros of of Dream Trawler, but not not ways that Dream Trawler is necessarily better than this card. That was that's mm -hmm. my 
also like i said you could just play both like it's really there's they're not competing for the same slot so adventurous impulse is interesting it's one mana look at the top three cards of your library this is a reprint you may really creature or land from among them put it in your hand um this is very similar to like a, a green ponder or like preordain you know this card's really good it's a green anticipate for like one mana right like i it's mean very good you're basically always gonna you're always gonna hit something if your deck is not built like absolute trash this is the proper power level of what once upon a time should be right for one mana right exactly and it's it, you're looking at two fewer cards but it's also not free I think Adventurous Impulse is just fine. And I think this card did see play the last time it was printed, so... Yep, uh, when uh, Abzan Snake was around. Um, it definitely saw play. Look at this green cantrip and realize how bad uh, Serum Visions is. Yeah, Serum Visions is terrible, and I hate it more every time I play with it. What? Serum Vision? It's terrible. It's a terrible card. It's absolute trash. Mm. That's for another day. It's... Look, look at I, this gentleman. I think most people will agree. That it's trash? Serum Vision is trash, dude. Draw a card, scry two. Trash for one mana? If you're comparing it to other the cards, rate's sure, good. it's trash. The ability sucks. Right, but that's what I have to do. Okay, so if that's the case, then I agree with you. I, I, think, I, think, I do think Opt is better than... I actually like Opt better than Serum Visions. I think being an instant... Because you're, when you play Serum Visions, you want to find something with it. When you just can trip and then scry to, it doesn't do what you want it to do. Every time I, I play Serum Visions, I want an answer or I want to land. <laughs> I and then I end up drawing a six drop and then I can see the next land that I'm going to draw on two turns. I disagree because I think I think when you're casting Serum Visions, you want to cast Serum Visions because you're trying to set up your next two turns. Or your well, next turn. That's not a card I want in my deck. I'd rather have your an deck, opt, which is going to fix deck my sucks. draws. Almighty Brushrag, 1-1 one, one for 1 with Trample. Good, Because, good lord, that 1-1 one, one needs Trample. Look at this art. This dude is so proud. I love Almighty this Brushrag gets plus 3, plus 3 until end of turn for 4 mana. <laughs> I love it too, but not enough to put on the list, my friend. No. No, it's but it's good, it's, good to, it's good to mutate on. It's a 1-1 one, one Trample for 1. Serum Vision's a sorcery, and therefore garbage. You've earned my <laughs> respect. Auspicious Starix. 5 mana for a 6-6. Six, six. That's a good rate. That's a real strong rate. Whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile X permanent cards, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Put those permanents onto the battlefield. You still there? Oh god, you're doing it again. What's happening? Why are we doing this? Robert. 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 I'm going to stop. I'm going to wait till he comes back. I'm going to pause it. Are you back? All right, I'm back. I'm back. Okay. I'm back. Guess um, she's back. Yeah, put those permanent cards on the battlefield. Like so it's like a mini Genesis wave every time you every time you mutate it, but like how many times do you realistically mutate this card, right? It's too expensive. Right, that's what I mean. Like not only too is it too expensive. expensive, like the ability is too hard to trigger for like one Okay, cool. I'll look at the top one card and put it on the battle. It is You know what? Now that I think about it, if I play one mana, one one trampler dude. Yeah. And then on turn two or turn three, I mutate it. And then turn four or turn five. God, it, just, it's, it is pretty good. Oh, but that's man, it's interesting. Just... So here's the thing. Like, if you put this on a creature that's mutated three times, and then you put this on top, it's mutated four times. Right. But but that's so much. I, I, I don't. I still think that's too much. It's just a lot of setup. There's a lot of things happening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. Barrier Breach. Three mana. XL up to three target enchantments. Cycling two. This is really niche, but I mean, like, there's it's definitely so good. there's definitely situations where I'm gonna be like, Excel your Oblivion Ring, your Banishing Light, and your Face Fetters. This card's very good. This card will become a staple in sideboards. Against what specifically? I'm not talking about in standard. I'm talking about in, in uh, older formats as well. Well, yes, but I'm asking what. <laughs> I don't know. Change my where, whenever someone has more than All one right. enchantment. All right, listen. I put it on the list. Okay, you could you could stop selling me on Barrier Breach. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Bristling Boar, four mana for a four three. It can't be blocked by more than one creature. This is a reprint, and it's just fine. Yeah, it's no good. Charge of the Forever Beast, uh, three mana as an additional cost to cast this spell. Real creature card from your hand. So I'm like, all right, here's my questing beast. Charge of the Unbuck. Forever Beast deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to the revealed card's power. No it's crap. This is like, oh yeah, you top deck this with no creatures in hand, and you're like, well, fuck me, I guess. 
I wish it was a forest. Boy, I wish it was some anything else. Colossification is a card I'm real excited about the idea of, but I don't think it's any good at all. Seven mana. <laughs> uh, when Colossification is a battlefield, tap Enchanted Creature. So it's like, you're going to get plus 20, plus 20, but you're not going to be able to use this until next turn, my dude. Does this come back with Storm Herald? Yes, but it taps him before combat. Taps him? Yeah, when it enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted uh, Creature. Right? So, like, you play Storm Herald, uh, Colossification comes back, it taps him, and then you go to combat, and you're like, all right, my guy's tapped. Yeah, you could fling it, but, like, this costs seven mana. So, are you going to hope that it survives? I mean, what basically what you'd have to do, the, the perfect setup is turn two Cathartic Reunion into turn three Herald, and then pray they don't have it. Yeah, Sovereigns of Lost Lara would be my go-to. And I mentioned this before, too, because, like, I played uh, a Sovereigns of Lost Lara to, like, the top top four or top two of a PTQ once. And uh, I loved that deck because I was Eldrazi, Eldrazi conscriptioning dudes. Swing, Swing with, with Ilharg. The, <laughs> yeah. The, but, the problem with that is that Ilharg is borderline unplayable. And, like, how am I getting that? How dare you? That's fucking rude. It's and, true. And I'd have to put this guy into the graveyard before I did that, which is... Not the easy. Cathartic Reunion, I guess. Yeah. My ear is itching. <laughs> wow, this card's terrible. <laughs> it's not great. It's not great, Bob. Poo tit on their creature to tap it for lethal damage. Think about it. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. It's actually, it's actually a removal spell. You're just like, I need to get through. I want to tap your guy down. Poo tit. <laughs> oh, I hope. <laughs> Essence Symbiote. Two mana. Uh, whenever a creature you control mutates, put a 1-1 counter on that creature and you gain 2 life. Well, this thing's cute. This is better than the egg? It's any creature gets pumped it's and true. you gain 2 life. I don't think you're playing either. Let's go. I don't think you're playing either. I'm going to take the egg off. <laughs> I'm taking the yeah. egg off. I do like Farfinder, though, because it's card advantage. And fixing, so. Uh, evacuation. Excavation Mole. My bad. Uh, that's a mole for three mana. Three, three for three with Trample. When it enters the battlefield, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Yeah, I don't care about that. Mm -mm. You got to do a little better than that. Exuberant yeah. Wolf Bear. Look at this. Look at this beauty. Look at this cutie. Four <laughs> mana for a four, four. Whenever it attacks, you may change the base power and toughness of a human you control to this is power and toughness until end of turn. So it just makes any other human a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. It's not bad. Mm. I mean, it's still a 4-4 four, 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 four with like an ability that doesn't happen until you attack. Yeah. I mean, that's not... I don't, I don't think it's any good. I think it's good and limited. Fertilid. Un, not to be confused with Fertilid Growth. Three Fertilid mana growth. for a 0-0. Zero, zero? Oh, that, that's terrible. Yeah, it comes into play with sucks. two counters. You can pay two and remove a counter to get a basic land and put it into play tapped. This is another reprint. It's fine. It's not gonna. Oh. You can uh, you can use the um, the the green proliferate that when a land enters the battlefield, you put a counter. You proliferate. Oh yeah, that's, that's true. Oh, that's infinite, right? Like it triggers itself. Well, with you, mana, it's infinite. Well, yeah, you tap two, you remove a counter to get a land. Triggers the proliferate. Put a counter on this. Tap two, get a land. Put a counter on this. Tap two, put a land. That's interesting. It's, uh, yeah, it's at least interesting. It's at least interesting, right? Yeah, That's exactly. It, catches, it, it piques my interest. Flycatcher Giraffid, five mana for a three. This five. was Frank last last Friday. Why last Friday? What happened last Friday? I don't know. That's just the first. That's the that's the date and time that that's that's what came to my head. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Enters the battlefield with your choice of a vigilance counter or a reach counter on it. Neither of which are going to make this five mana three five worth your time. The art, however, it's good like it fully grown three mana <laughs> target creature gets plus three plus three put a trample counter on it i think as far as like plus three plus three pump spells this one's good because the trample counter remains forever yeah uh but that being the case uh it's not infinite with lotus cobra because lotus cobra is only going to you one mana and the land enters the battlefield tap so you're you're actually you're still gonna need to provide your own mana it's a byom party where you got to bring your own mana yeah you gotta bring your own mana just uh, that being the case, three mana for this card, unless you're drawing a card, is not going to do anything. Gem Razor, four mana for a 4-4 four, four, reach, infinite with two Lotus Cobras. Solid solid addendum. 
Uh, whenever this creature mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment an opponent controls. Mutate cost is three. I mean, this card just seems like an inclusion in any green creature deck. Yeah, I agree with that. That's just incident. I mean, it's a four mana, four, four trample reach. I mean, if you have a turn one land of war elf, you can go turn two this guy. And it's, That's it's already a four, four reach trampler on turn two. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, this is, this is, this card, this card's good. I like this card. Plus I like the name and I love the art. Like, why is he so pissed off at the rocks? Oh, uh, they're, ge they're gems, Marie. <laughs> they're, they're, called... they're minerals, Marie. They're called minerals, Marie. <laughs> Oh, did you get some more rocks? They're minerals, <laughs> Marie. Oh, put this on your yeah, put this on your questing beast. Yeah. Unfortunately, oh, that's like, dumb. It's not a bad idea, but like the problem is questing beast already has like enough abilities and if it if it became an eight eight, I'd be I'd be okay with that, but like it still just stays a four four. So I feel like it's almost wasting this four four, you know what I mean? Um Ophaloaf, if you mutate a tapped creature. Yes, it stays tapped. That body, the body is still tapped. That body is still, <laughs> still tapped. tapped. Glowstone Recluse, two, three for three. Mutate four. It's interesting when their mutate costs are more than their casting costs. You're like, oh, you're going to yeah. do something sweet. Whenever this creature mutates, put two one one counters on it. That ain't that sweet. No. I need board. I need something that's going to change my board. Greater Sandworm, seven mana. Can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Cycling two. This is a reprint, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter. Gonna reap her into the trash can. Look at this elephant man. Elephant man. Elephant man. man. John Merrick, man. Look at John Merrick over here. <laughs> uh, that's the elephant man, in case you guys didn't know. This is crap. Uh, when Honey Mouth has Battlefield, gain four life. You don't like six, six for six? No. I mean, no. I don't either. Horn Bash Mentor. This is the. This dude. Group. This is a fun guy at the parties. Yeah, this guy knows how to party. He teaches you how to party. This guy fucks, right? This guy, <laughs> this guy, horde bash, three horde three bash mentor, three three for three. When it enters the battlefield, put a trample counter on target non-human creature, <laughs> and then you put a one on counter on each creature with trample. Yeah, I mean Jeez. we know what we know the drill. This guy rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a solid reference right there. Humble naturalist. Uh, two mana for a one three. Add a mana of any color. Spend this mana only cast a creature spell. This is this sets like ramper trash. guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this spell. This is this sets trash. One sets trash is another sets treasure. Ivy elemental. This is another reprint. X and a green. A dangerous battlefield. With X one one counters on it. That's fine. There's a lot of counters in this set, so like I'm sure there's some sort of synergies, but you'll never be playing them in any constructed format. So. Kogla, the Titan Ape. I was really thing. hoping for a King Kong alternate art of this to go with the Godzilla alternate arts, but it was not meant to be, especially because you could literally, it's perfect because he's hanging from a building and holding a human being. I, I, I can't even imagine like how maybe much. Maybe it changed how, at the last second. That maybe, because I mean, like this is like, you. The, uh, yeah, anyway. It's a six he's even got flying. He's got flying stuff around him. Right, I mean, it's it perfect. had to it's, have been. Right, it's like the, the alternate art would have been literally perfect for like a King Kong yeah alternate art like and, and like king kong and godzilla have fought before so it's it fits into that mythos uh it's a seven six for six when it enters the battlefield it fights up to one creature you don't control so that's good it's a removal spell uh when it attacks destroy an artifact or an enchantment defending player controls that's good because it doesn't have to connect it just has to attack return a human you control to its owners is this an alphabetical order oh uh, yeah okay i guess so geez i feels weird they're rolling okay uh, return it. Return a human you control to its owner's hand. It gains indestructible until the end of turn. Yeah, it's definitely a King Kong reference, obviously. Um, but like, this card it's seems bit, good, right? It. I, I feel like there's always cards like this that seem good. Just is it good in standard? You know, I mean, it could be great. I'm, I should be on the list. I. It's funny I, because I the that. only card this metric fails by is that it doesn't have a way to interact with planeswalkers when it enters the battlefield. Like, if this doesn't if, have trample. If, if this said fight up to one creature or planeswalker, I guess you can't fight planeswalkers, but you know what I mean. It wouldn't be much of a fight, honestly. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it just has to attack to destroy an artifact or an enchantment is very, very good to me. Yeah. But I don't know, like the fact that like you can't untap, like you have to untap before you can you can you know give them indestructible is a big deal. I'm gonna still put it on there because I think it has a lot going I would. for it. And like even if you just play this on six to kill their, 
fights, though. It can't even kill questing beasts because they just trade, you know? One buck. God damn it. Damn it. I don't know. It's still decent. I would put it on the, put it on the it's list. It's still got a lot of... It's got a lot of things going for it. Put it on the list. I put it on the list. Lead the Stampede. Three mana. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal any number of creature cards and put them in your hand. Put the rest in the bottom. This is a state. This is a, a reprint here. Yeah, it was a rare, too. What do you think of this card? It wasn't It wasn't a rare. It wasn't uncommon. I thought Lead the Stampede was a rare. Nah, it's always been uncommon. No. Oh. I think I think it's good. Yeah, I mean, in the right deck, it's definitely really good. If you if you draw at least two cards, like it's just divination, right? If you yeah. draw three, it's just great. Yeah. Migration path four mana. Search your library for two basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield. Tap, then shuffle your library, or you can just cycle this. This is this is good too. It is good. I think all of these new cards uh, that cost four mana and search for two lands that put go right into play. I think they're all very good. Yep. I think they're always pretty much playable. There's always a deck that will fit them. And if you can cycle this for two on just to hit your third land drop, it's just fine. Like, it's even better. Migratory Great Horn. 3-4 four for four with Mutate 3. So, again, we've got a cheaper Mutate cost. Whenever this creature mutates, search your library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield, tap, and shuffle your library. That's not bad. Hmm. So, if I go, like, turn, again, a turn one elf into turn turn two, three, four, that ramps me into another, another land. That's... Interesting. I don't know if it's good enough, obviously, because like it's like it, by itself, it's just a three, four, four, four. That's the problem. Time out. We keep okay. we keep saying turn one elf, but there is no turn one elf. Gilded I mean, goose. you're saying goose, I guess, yeah. but I mean, it keeps its abilities as a goose, so technically, I mean that that's not that bad. This is. I would put this on the list. I think what I think the play pattern you just named is actually pretty relevant. You upgrade your goose, but you keep the goose's ability. Oh, what about Grazer? Arboreal Grazer. You fucking love that card. That's it. Exactly. That's another one. Yeah. Arboreal Grazer is a great mutate target it for becomes these guys, a three, man. It becomes a 3-4 with reach, too. Yeah, because the Grazer. Yeah, that's true. Yep. And now you have and you four search... lands on the battlefield. Right. Yeah. I'm going to put it on there. Wow. So you can go. Hold on. So you can go turn wow. one Grazer into turn two Great Horn into turn three five drop. And you didn't, and you didn't require to draw the extra land cards. You could search one of them out. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's not bad. It's not bad. Surprisingly, yeah, Grazer doesn't have Defender, which is a ver it's an interesting stat, but like it's been it's relevant. Yeah, yeah, because like doesn't cause... either. Who doesn't? Leaf, Leaf can Druid. Yeah, yeah, that's well, that guy doesn't either. That guy's got power. So no, he doesn't. He's a zero three. It's not a 1 3? No, it's 0 3. Are you sure? Yeah, Leafkin's an 0 3. Okay, you don't have to brag about it. <laughs> I'm starving. Oh, wow, it is. Yeah, we'll get some food after this. Monsters. Yeah, we'll just, get some food after just, this. Just not together. Just not together, unfortunately. <laughs> said, yeah, we'll get some food after this. <laughs> Monstrous step. Five mana. Target creature gets plus seven, plus seven. Up to one other target creature blocks it this turn if able. Stinks. Yeah, it's just you're not going to spend five mana at sorcery speed to, and hope it gets through. Mosscoat Goriak. Three mana for a 2 4 with vigilance. Hmm? Oh, nothing, Daddy. We'll get some after us. Sorry. Are you guys getting food after this? Mm, she asked what she can make me. I oh. said nothing. We'll figure it out afterwards. Okay. Sultai, the Mythos of Brokos. Mythos of Brokos. Who the fuck is Brokos? Four mana. If, if blue-black was spent to cast this spell, search your library for a card, put that card into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. Oh, I like this. Without the blue-black, return up to two permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. So for four mana, it's just double regrowth. Um, the interesting about this card is that unlike most of the recent cards that do this, this doesn't exile itself. Oh, it's permanent cards. That's why. Okay. It's yeah, excluding this... itself from ever being infinite. That's why. I don't think that this is any good. I don't either, which is really unfortunate. I know. I mean, you get back Hydroid Crassus in questing based. <laughs> right? But like... I don't think it's any good. What about four mana? You just search your library for a Nissa, put it in the graveyard. Next turn, you get a Nissa and a questing beat. I don't think this is that bad, actually. I don't think this is that good. The problem is you're never going to want to spend the mana on this, right? That's the problem. Like at four, at four, at four mana, we're already doing such powerful that's stuff. What, that's my point, right? Yeah. There's no turn you want to take off to do this instead of other things in your deck. Like maybe as a one of in your deck, and if you draw it in the late game, I mean, it, it can definitely be strong. 
Yeah, it but does it's with Soul Tide and tutors a card. It does tutor a card because most of the times, most of the things you're going to be playing are like putting a Euro in your graveyard, not getting the Euro back, and then like searching for like, and getting back like a Nissa. And this is like a late game card, though. That's the thing. It's not like a turn four card. I could see it as a one of. I could. Yeah, I think it's earned a spot on the list as a one of because I do think it's a good one of. Like, I'm if you're it. just in the late game, if you just get like one Hydroid Crassus, one Nissa, and you put into the graveyard from your library an, an Euro. Yeah, like if that's you're, if really you're in a good. mirror, if you're in a mirror match, this just wins you the game. If you're if you're in a, a, a stalemate, yeah, I think if you look at this as a late card, I think it's much better. I want to go to the next one. Yep, plummet. Plummet's always just playable. I mean, I'm yeah. just gonna put it on the list. It's not. It's not exciting. It's just always good. If there's a Lyra, if there's a, it kills Dream Trawler, man. It just kills it. Yeah. No. Yeah. No there's questions asked. There's nothing they can do about it. It's no. Ram through. This him. dude is literally dead. You're watching this guy get murdered. <laughs> Straight up murdered, dude. This guy's uh -huh. dead. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. That's interesting because it's just like fight, but without fighting. And I'm surprised this isn't keyworded yet. Like, because it's literally just a, a variation of fight, right? If the creature you control has trample, excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller instead. Maybe it should be called like sneak attack or something. I, didn't they call it punch? Maybe. This is also instant, too. This is no good. Really? Interesting. Yeah, I don't think this is any good. Although, this is an alternative to fling. So if fling is playable, then maybe ram through is playable. Um, Not necessarily, because they have to have a creature. Just saying. <laughs> okay, we're going to go to the next card. Sudden spinnerets. One mana. Target creature gets plus... This is just Spider-Man, right? It looks like Spider-Man elk. Well, Where's Spider he shooting, shooting those webs out of? Well, the elk isn't shooting them. They're getting shot at the elk. They're coming from oh. off the screen. Okay. Yeah. Target creature Straight gets plus eyes. one, plus three until end of turn. Put a reach counter on it and untap it. This is junk. Unless they're coming out of its sides, but I don't think that's the case. It looks like it's coming out the sides to me. Well, that's what it would look like if the si if something was hitting the sides as well. You can't tell the beginning or the end of the web, right? Like, it's going to look <laughs> the same whether it's hitting the sides or coming out of the sides. Because the Whatever. contact remains the same. Anyway, I'm going to go to the next one. Survivor's Bond. Two mana. Another choose, bond. choose one or both. Return a human creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Return a non-human creature from your graveyard to your hand. That's not good. <sighs> nope. Gets Questing Beast back. <laughs> like if you, if there's a situation where you're getting two creatures back for two mana it's good right mm -mm. really mm -hmm. why this is no good this is no good can you explain it you're not explaining you're just it's just not good there 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 are cards like this that exist it just doesn't it's not good okay yeah no all right that's fine because there's there a black a, card that does the same thing, right? That's what you're going to refer to? There was a pirate. Hold on. I'm going to pause it until you're done lagging. Okay. What were you saying? There's a what? Oh, yeah, we're back. Okay. but I was. There's a pirate one already. Oh, God. Find Finality. Yeah, that's a, probably a better version of that card, right? Seems better. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. All right. Three mana prevent all damage that would be dealt this turn by creatures your opponents control. Yeah. All right. That's a cool little. It's a mirror breaker. It is a mirror, and it's also like it's a yeah. It's definitely a non-equal, um, librius, fog, right? Fog. Librius, librius, Equal librius, fog. Yeah. Huh. Oh, Tit Titanoth Rex, eleven, eleven for nine. Trample. Good rate. Right. Yeah, you're getting. It's not a nine, nine for nine. It's an eleven, eleven for nine. Okay. When you cycle it, put a trample counter on a creature you control. Who kills this? Who in the lore can deal with this? Look at that thing. How do you deal with that? You throw a zombie at it? Oh, someone said this is shut off by Questing Beast. That's true. You can't yeah, prevent that damage. Can. God, he's yeah. so good. God, I'd be rich right now if Kurt was sticking to his plan. Vivian Monsters Advocate, Thanks. the second Planeswalker in the format. Oh, Mike, what's going on? Fly MTG. Thank you so much for the resub, buddy. I appreciate you, my dude. Murder kills it. That's what kills it, Michael. <laughs> or Robert, rather. <laughs> I'm getting all these people confused. Vivian, Monsters Advocate, five mana for a three loyalty planeswalker. Ugh. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. 
It doesn't say at any time. It just says any time. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library. Now you're selling me. That's future sight, right? Like, that's just future sight. Oh, God. Plus God. one, create a 3-3 three, three green beast token. Put your choice of vigilance, reach, or trample on it. Okay, so this is a 5-minute planeswalker that plus one... So it's very similar to Garrick uh, Primal Hunter. They both cost five. They both start at three. Their plus one both gives you a 3-3. Three, three. This one gets reach, trample, or vigilance, though, which is very strong. So the plus one's better. Negative two... Uh, when you cast your next creature spell this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser mana cost, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. That seems fucking nuts, dude. This this card is is nuts. This whole card, top to bottom, is nuts. Negative two. Everything. Negative two. I'll search for. I'll, I'll play a six drop. Search my library for any creature between zero and five. Yeah, this is this is nuts. This card from top to bottom. This and if card it's is on the battlefield. Nuts. Yeah, this card's ridiculous from top to bottom. There's nothing bad about this card. I want to put it on the list. Yeah, this card's friggin' amazing. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, negative two. You go cast my five drop, search for questing beast, put it into play. Questing beast? Come on, dude. <laughs> Attack for four. Oh, Jesus. Cast a five-drop haster. She ha they have a family. Wilt. Destroy an artifact or enchantment for two mana. Cycle it. Eh. Is this better than Return to Nature? Like, it's definitely better than Naturalize. Return, Return to, to na Nature. Return to... Is that what it's called? The card no, because that... No, you're talking about the one with the pumpkin on it? Yeah. What's that card? No, because it hits a graveyard. Right, but this cycles, right? So, like, it, yeah. the last thing... I, I mean, is cycling better than hitting a, a specific a one card in a graveyard? I don't think so. Really? Yeah, because I think the added benefit, the, the added effect takes... is more flexible on your sideboard. It's it's now, if you're trying to attack graveyards, okay. Okay, that's you have to fair. have and something else. You're thinking of putting it into the sideboard. I'm thinking of in the game itself, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, if I'm in a game... Sometimes they don't have an artifact or enchantment that I care about, and I just rather have a threat to get the in game. In the over game, it. it's better. Sure. Right. In the game, it's better. In the sideboard, it's worse. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it can still go on the list, right? Like if if Return of Nature cycles out of the this format, it's going to get played. Like the card is good. This, this card's going to get played because it yeah. cycles for two. Right. I agree. Oh, we're into like, the gold cards, boys. The green cards. We liked. And the red cards, I don't think we went over. The red cards were Blitz of the Thunder Raptor, Cathartic Reunion, Dranith Stinger for its for its Torbrin synergies. Yeah, application. Fire Prophecy, Flame Spill, Forbidden Friendship, Lucka, Coppercoat, Outcast, Shredded Sails, Weaponize the Monsters, and Yadaro, Wandering Monster. The the green cards, Adventurous Impulse, Barrier Breach, Gem Razor, Kogla the Titan Ape, Lead the Stampede, Migration Path, Migratory Greathorn, Mythos of Brokus. Plummet, <laughs> Vivian, Monsters Advocate, and Wilt. Those are the cards. And you can all, you can find them in the in the YouTube description below if you guys are watching on YouTube. Back for more. Six mana. Return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. When you do, it fights up to one creature you don't control. Instant speed's nice, but six. Is oh, too that much. is nice, and it's a fight it's, though. It's too much, man. This is this is a standard equivalent of, um, Indrik Stompaller, Right? Is that the one? The 4-4 four, four that fights for 6? Oh! Uh, is it Affectionate Indric? Affectionate Indric. That's why I always get them confused. Yeah, yeah, this is just that. Because, like, at the very least, you're probably getting a 4-4 four, four back. It fights something, so you're paying 6 mana for a 4-4 a, a four, four that fights. It does get back Questing Beast. You can go 6 mana, get back your Questing Beast, fight something. I will say this. You could you could have a deck where you're you're putting like that Titan off or whatever in your graveyard and on their instep you're bringing back an 11-11. And you just got rid of a blocker. But it's still it's still that's that's a lot, man. 6 mana is a lot. It's you got to draw this. Okay, but here's you got to have it in your Oh, traditionally, you cycle it. traditionally a lot of a lot of five mana reanimate spells have seen play at some point or another like there's it's just, sure it's a thing for one more mana you get instant speed and you get a removal spell on this dude i just said what i just realized was those huge creatures that we were talking about they have cycle yeah so they're getting in the graveyard. so they're going to the graveyard um, that, that could be a the thing. 11 11 does trample yeah and it and it makes trample counter 
I think you put it on the list. It's not that bad. It's I don't not hate it, and I think the upside is very, very good. Yeah. Even if you're just getting, like, your Hydroid Crassus back, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Boneyard Lurker. Two, a blue... Uh, two, a black, and a green. Uh, for a 4-4. Four, four. So, 4-4 four, for four, four, 4. Whenever this creature mutates, return a permanent from your graveyard or your hand. That's not bad. Because, again, you're looking at mutate, like, you're going to assume this is the better creature, right? I'm going to put this on top. So... I'm basically trading this card, or or the creature rather, the creature I'm putting it on for any any permanent in my graveyard. I don't think this is any good. Interesting. I, I don't like this one. I just think permanents are so good right now, like questing. questing There's so many ways Nista to kill creatures, cards. man. It just scares the crap out of me that I have to have something living when you're trying to mutate. I have to have something living. <laughs> I'm gonna need another cheetah. I'm jealous. So, no, you don't like this guy? I don't like it. No, I don't think it's okay. any good. Okay. I agree with Fisa Crows. I, I would play the Fine Broker over this. Oh, we found Brokos. I agree with that as well. Um, There's also the new Fine Broker, isn't there? Yeah, there's uh, uh, Acolyte of Affliction. Yeah, and it puts two in the graveyard, so it's actually helping yeah. you find those things. And it's helping us uh put creatures in the graveyard for back for more. So, yeah. You know, what are you going to do? Brokos. Two black, green, blue. Trample, you may cast Brokos from your graveyard using its mutate ability. See, this was a card I didn't understand at first because the mutate ability was so subtle and nuanced, right? Mm -hmm. So I looked at this card and I was like, okay, but the only ability it has is, is to mutate. cast it from the graveyard, right? So like, I'm not giving any creature abilities. What do I care about this? And the only thing I could figure is like, you're just making a creature a little bigger, right? If I have a 4-4, four, four, the only benefit to mutating this is is to make it a 6-6, six, six, right? So you're just giving it plus X, plus X? I think late game, I think late game, this card turns all your other crappy creatures into, into six, a threat six. that needs to be removed. Yeah, okay, and that's trample. what I'm thinking. Right, sure. That's what I'm thinking. But Oh, and also it triggers your mutates too. But like, yeah, it's a real subtle ability. Like, this is not like a super obvious thing, right? No, no, I agree. I mean... Because if I have I a 3-3, three, three, I'm basically yeah. paying 5 mana to give it plus 3, plus 3 and trample, right? Yeah, basically. No, paying 6. Uh, yeah, it's 5 mana. Okay, five. it's 5. Yeah. Five. What an interesting... What an interesting mutate cost. Two hybrid Demir green green. I, I know, I was thinking the what same a thing. Weird, what a weird mutate why cost. Wouldn't it just, why wouldn't it just be Sultai? Yeah, why not just two blue-black green? Because you're already paying. Like, that's just its mana cost. Why would they double up on the green. I guess it's flavor wise like you're saying it's more green than everything else I don't know I don't know this card doesn't excite me which is sad because it's the Sultai legendary nightmare beast elemental so it's it's not obvious but I think this card is good and limited no I, I disagree I think it's very, I think it's obvious, very obvious that this card, card is broken good and limited, limited. I would windmill every slam this card every creature you draw is yes. a 6-6 six, six trampler it makes every one of your 2-2 two, two flyers into 6-6 six, six flyers and it never dies like no this card this, is super obvious that it's good and limited this card doesn't does, this card doesn't take up the same deck slot as Uro, and Uro's dumb and it's busted and it's way too strong for what it is. But it, I, I wouldn't say I would play Uro over this because I, I, they're two different things. Who who said that? Someone Who's, in chat. Where? Oh, I'd rather play Uro. Yeah, Mark. I would too. Yeah. But I mean, I don't think these two are competing, right? Like, it's not like you yeah. only. Again, it's not a situation where you only get to choose one, guys. Yeah, you're talking late game. You're talking, especially if you're playing Uro, you probably have seven lands on the battlefield or something, eight eight lands on the battlefield, and, and you're going off, and then you Uro, and then your Uro draws you into an Arboreal Grazer, and then you can play your Brokos onto your Arboreal Grazer. But here's Grazer. another thing. Like, consider, like, this does make a Gilded Goose in the late game a better top deck, right? Exactly. If I top deck a Gilded Goose, now all of a sudden I have a 6-6 six, six Flyer. <laughs> Rob is frozen, and it looks fucking ridiculous. <laughs> oh lord are you back dude i'm I'm sorry no it's good what you can't do I do you know I... what do you know what's causing it is it your internet connection no it's it's purely random nothing is happening okay. well, i mean i don't know okay the last thing i said was gilded goose makes this uh you can make a gilded goose a six six flyer yeah i saw that yeah like, no that's i thought a good, that, yeah that's a i agree deal. That. that was great i mean the the thing about this is like there's no real cost if it's just sitting in your graveyard it's just it says it's just upside, i think right? that Pilot, 
Pilot Eater says, I think this is better than in constructed than you think. In what way? I think we're saying be. that this is constructed playable. No. I don't think this is a four of. I don't think so either, especially because it's legendary. If it had cycling, I would four of this thing maybe. Oh my god, that's that's a fail. This should have cycling. Yeah, because you kind of want it in your grave. That might yeah. be too good though. They want you, you to think? cast it first. I don't know. It's good. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm. It's going on the list. It's good. I'm not excited about it, but I think it's good. Right. Also, I, I think this card's the perfect card to come back for more. Right. If like you want to come back six, for more, it's an dude. option you have. You can mutate onto it. Anyway, channeled force two blue two blue red as initial card to ca as cost uh, discard X cards. It's an instant, so we got that working for us. I'll just let's say I discard three for the sake of explanatory explaining this card target player draws three cards it deals x damage to three damage to up to one target creature or planeswalker it's too expensive four mana is too expensive didn't Ral's outbursts he play very minimally hmm fascinating but that also didn't have you discard cards that just let you look and pick a card but i'm saying a four mana card that lets you deal damage well, I'm so, okay, so I, I guess I should have been more specific. I think it's four is too much mana because I think you're very limited on the amount of cards you have in your hand. Okay, that makes sense. Is. Right. It wasn't having the cards in hand was not a requirement. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Also, I think this should probably be X plus one because you're not net. You're actually just, eh, no, X plus one's too good because then it's free. Right? Yeah. The The cost to this card is that you're dealing the damage. Like, that's your that's your upside. It's not like you're just looting and losing this. It's not like. Uh, frantic search where you're spending the card to lose two and gain two so you're down one card you are yeah. down one card with this but you're also dealing x damage yeah which is where yeah that makes sense i don't think it's that great though no i don't either cheville bane of monsters oh, this card is maybe this wasn't the card i'm thinking hold on black green no, you're thinking of the simic one yes yes i am yeah. black green i don't even think i know what this guy does black green for a one three with death touch <laughs> this guy looks fucking legit dude Oh man, and he's got that mustache. He's got that Jesse Ventura mustache. <laughs> uh, at the beginning, of, really good. At the beginning of your upkeep, if your opponents control no permanents with bounty counters on them, which they won't naturally, put a bounty counter on target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. So I'll put it on your Nissa. Whenever a permanent opponent controls with a bounty hunter, kind of dies, you gain three life and draw a card. This card's really good. Is it really good? Oh, I think this is. I think this is a very good card. Hmm. He's he, a, a two mana one three death touch alone is good. Yeah, that's true. You like right, you like shovel right on the list. All right, well he's on the list. Shovel, Chevel, Bane of Monsters is on the list. Robert. Cheville. Cheville. Okay. Yeah, this card's good. I mean, like obviously you want to kill their things and gain three life and draw a card, but you know that's that's the ideal situation. Death. It's basically yeah, I mean, the three life. Yeah, they love giving you three life and giving you a card. Death's Oasis. Oh, yeah, just play this guy on two. Euro on three. You're just drawing all the cards. Uh, put a permanent layer. Spend no permanents if your opponent. At the beginning of your upkeep. Okay, but the problem is, like, you're not going to. I guess the next turn, you get to go to your next turn, upkeep, decide a thing, and then draw your card and kill a thing on their next turn. Yeah, that seems good. Yep. Death's Oasis. This is also a cycle of enchantments, rare enchantments. Uh, we have Abzan here. Uh, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. This, which feels very Sultai Ascendancy to me. Yeah. Uh, then return a creature card with lesser converted mana cost than the creature that died from your graveyard to your hand. So if my questing beast dies, I get to return <laughs> like a, th a a one to a three drop, right? Yeah. Oh, you can return. Oh no, Uro is not Abzan. I was gonna say you can return an Uro. The Uro dies. Still can. And then you bring back a two drop. Sacrifice, yeah, but they go to your hand too, so you just have to, you still have to recast oh, to them hand. and everything, yeah, not the battlefield. Oh, oh my god, I thought this card was so much better than it was. No, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's medium. No, I don't like it. Oh, uh, that sucks. One and a sacrifice, you gain life equal to the greatest converted mana cost among creatures you control. Hmm. Yeah, I don't that, think this card's that good. That sucks. I wanted this to be good. I thought, it, I thought it put it into the battlefield. Dire Tactics, white, black, exile a creature. If you don't control a human, you love equal to you lose like equal to the creature's toughness. This is so good. Is this good? I think this card's so good. With or without humans? Both. Okay. This card's really good. It it exile. If it destroyed, I'd say no. Exile, it's really big right now. And it's an instant right now. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is I don't want to like play this on two and also take four from Questing Beast. Like I mean the whole point of me killing Questing Beast is like to not take the four, right? So it's like 
I mean, but if, if they're playing Questing Beast, you're probably taking four anyways. Something, something, Questing Beast, Kerwit, no. <laughs> rainbow. Hashtag rainbow. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I mean, it reminds me of Orzhov Charm, right? Like, what does Orzhov Charm say? Uh, Orzhov Charm, you can return a creature with one, with CMC one. Destroy target creature and you lose life equal to its toughness. Like, yeah. that's that's one of the second modes. But you're also not getting the other two modes. This is and, good, dude. All right. I mean, I just feel like Despark is better. I don't know. No. Really? You're killing that many creatures with with that cost three or less? I mean, technically speaking, you 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 want... want Probably you dying. don't lose... I'm going to pause it until Rob gets back. I'm back now. So we were talking about D Spark versus this, and uh, well, why? Why are, this is only creature? Like, why aren't we just playing like the black one, the one black spell that's like destroy target creature or remove all the counters from a creature? Because I feel like that's gonna hit the creature you want to kill most of the time without the life loss. Because the... oh my god, Rob, come on, buddy, I... get it together, get out of here. Okay, well, we're trying to talk about like the the point is like I think there's better options for two mana. I just think X. Okay, so it comes down to whether or not exiling is is extremely relevant. In the games that I've played in standard recently, using a, a removal spell on an Uro or a removal spell on a Cavalier is is not good enough. You're you're fighting a losing battle. Hmm. I think if this card has, if you have a human, this card is great. I think if you don't, it's just a pretty average removal spell. Did you start recording again? Yes, I did. Okay, good. Yes, I did, or Robert. I mean, I agree with you. I'm not saying it's it's just better. <laughs> ultimatum one of five. Eerie ultimatum. Abzan ultimatum. How's this eerie? Return any number of permanent cards with different names from your graveyard to the battlefield. I like this one a lot. This is cool. I never played in standard where these were played when the older ones were played, so I don't know how relevant they are at seven. Uh, mana. All of them, all of them that were played were named Cruel Ultimatum. So <laughs> that that's all you need to know. That was the only one that saw any any sort of consistent level of play. I mean, um, Uro's got to be able to ramp. I mean, getting to seven mana is not hard. I mean, no, even if you even if you're playing like the the four man, you just play the four mana one that that gets you to uh, the that gets you to six, right? And then you untap on turn five and you play this. Uh, oh, yeah, you're talking about the search the card search that searches for, for two lands. lands. Yeah, and like you can just go turn one cycle, turn two cycle, turn three cycle, turn four this you know that thing, and then turn five you just yeah, oh, it doesn't it's... exile itself. Interesting. Well, it's not. It's not. It shouldn't have to. Emergent ultimatum, assault ultimatum. Search your library for up to three monocolored cards with different names and exile them. I'll say questing beast, Nissa, and what's my third? What do I get? What's the third card that I get that I care about? I don't know, man. Questing beast, voracious Brokos. gray shark. Okay, uh, that's not a monocolored card. Uh, an opponent chooses one of those cards. Shuffle that card in your library. You may cast the other two without paying their mana costs. Their mana costs. Is... I don't think this is that It good. depends on the biggest thing you're doing. Like, if you're getting three different ten drops. Yeah. But, I mean, it says monocolored, so it's like you can't get Eldrazi with this. Um, the point is, if you get, like, you're probably going to get, like, two eight drops, right? So you're getting 16 mana worth of value on a seven mana spell, right? This card is just as good as the cards you're getting with it, right? Uh, Omniscience, Enter the Infinite, Gristlebrand is pretty sweet, actually. Yep, yeah, that is. That's a thing. Which one do you shuffle back? Uh, you, guess... you you shuffle your hand back into your library. Yeah, this is... Yeah, I, I think this card has a lot of potential. I think it's definitely strong enough to put on the list. Like, we don't know what we're going to do with it, but I think the ability is, it's like, it, the potential is there, right? For sure. Front la Frond Frondland Felidar. Four mana for a 3-5 with Vigilance. Creatures you control with Vigilance have one and a tap target creature. It's a sweet effect, but I don't think it's any good. Nah, not on a 3-5 for four. Like, nah. 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 That's rare too. Ooh, that's not a great rare. That just feels uncommon, interestingly enough. It does. And give me that on a two three for two. Yeah. I'd rather I'd do that. Two three for two seems real strong. General Kudro of Dranith. Three mana for a three three. Very similar to Kuranos, uh, the three three for three with a white, black, white, 
one white oh, black. Oh, about the, 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 the dog? The dog, yeah. Other humans get plus one, plus one. Whenever General Kudro or another human enters the battlefield under your control, exile a card from an opponent's graveyard. Um, so you could just literally play this in your Dire Tactics deck and exile their Euros. I don't... I don't... I mean, it's good because it's a 3-3 three, three for 3 and it anthems your other humans, but I don't think this is a good lord. Sacrifice two humans, destroy target creature with power 4. Really? What more do you want from a lord? It's a 3-mana three 3-3, three, three, so it's sort of like the cost is already on, on board for a lord. Okay, let me change. Let me rephrase. It's obviously a good lord because oh, it's okay. a three mana lord. It is a three three on its own, and it's a lord, right? And it has two. I'm other just abilities. disappointed by his two other abilities. Really? What if you go hero per saint one on turn two, general Kudra on turn three? Then you get to attack for three with hero. It makes a two two. You get to exile one of their graveyard cards. You Wait, get to sack does the hero token. hero makes human humans? I thought it makes soldiers. It is it human does soldiers? Make soldiers. Hold on, hero of. If, if hero makes humans, that's they make different. one one white human creature tokens. Okay, that's interesting. He makes that's one one white human creature tokens. Yeah, and then that that's, that's more impressive. Free, that's then then that me. Oh wow! So oh, now he's excited. Well, oh, I'm talking wow. about the, the exile card, the card that you said. Um, yeah, dire tactics. It right. triggers. Yeah. Yeah, Again, that card goes way up in this deck, right? That's just a two mana exile any creature with Absolutely. no downside. Absolutely. Also, sacrifice oh, two the... humans, destroy a creature. Like, two mana, sack two tokens to kill any creature. Like, yeah. Oh, that yeah, that's big game with hero. I didn't know you could hero made humans. Yeah. Elspeth makes them too. Does the new Elspeth make humans? Good question. Oh, wow. Hold on. Uh, Elspeth, Sons Nemesis, create two one one white human soldier tokens. Yeah. All right. De they've definitely made a point to put a bunch of humans in this set. That's, oh, boy. A turn two hero of Precinct 1, turn three general, turn four Elspeth. That's pretty good. good. Who are you listening for? Nothing. Robert! Uh, General's Enforcer. So apparently the General and the General's Enforcer. This guy does not look human. Looks this mean. guy looks like a... like a. This guy looks like the mountain after they brought him back to life, man. That's pretty good. 2-3 uh, two, for 2. Legendary humans use scrolls of indestructible, which is nice because he's protecting his General. Oh. Uh, Four mana, exile a creature, exile a card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, create a 1 1 white human soldier token. That's a great card. This card is exile really their good. hero to get yeah. to you make a 1 1. Yeah, I'll put it on the list. I think yeah, if absolutely. there's a if there's a white black humans deck, this is there is definitely something in that color in that color pie. Also, this yeah. guy also triggers hero precinct one. Yeah, this is really good. All right, I'm 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 a fan. I like what's happening here. Genesis Ultimatum, Phil Co the Phil Collins special. <laughs> Look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest into your hand. I like this because it just draws you... F it, it At the very least, it draws you five. The last thing you want to do, though, is hit, like, three lands, right? Like, Put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest in your hand. So if I flip three spells and two cards i only get two two permanents right but that you draw you're still drawing three sure yep yeah. okay i, I was mean, just trying to understand I, I, again i think this is fine i think standard is in a position where like you're you're going to be able to cast all of these eventually and there's not a ton of counter spells either being played so it's not like you're like oh no i'll cast my genesis old man they're like spell pierce it like yeah I think all of these are like you have the time to do these yeah 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 I agree. Especially if you're playing something like Nissa, like I mean, oh, just well, turns, you're just gonna turn six Genesis Ultimatum. Mystical dispute is is a feel bad, but yeah. Right, but again, no one's like main decking them. A mystical yeah. dispute? People main deck mystical dispute? Oh yeah, dude. There's there's generally four slots in every deck where you're either running either gust or mystical dispute. Uh, every deck I build in standard that's that's got blue that has blue runs two mystical dispute. Well, mystical me. dispute also hits Eluna Apex of Wishes six six flying trample for five, that's good enough by itself I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non land permanent. Uh, put that card on the battlefield or into your hand. It's really good. This seems really good. Yeah. This seems more obviously better than the Brokos. Oh. I disagree. I think Brokos is. I think they're both, flying I think they're both good. Yeah, like this just even just uh, just hard casting. This is a six six flyer for five. 
Yeah, it's good. The, like, the thing about this card is this card is like Teamer to me, right? Teamer, everyone always says, is a trap. Like, you look at the – what was the team, the Teamer, the um, the dude with the with the knives, and he had, like, three abilities. Uh, knuckle Blade. Nuts. Yeah, Savage Knuckle Blade. Like, the card is stupid, but it just wasn't playable because it was in Teamer. Right. And – like, but Teamer it, has a hard time it, dealing with bigger creatures, right? Because you're just your your removal suite is limited by red. The, right? Teamer, Teamer, in my opinion, has always been on its face. The cards look busted, but for some reason, when you play right. them, they're not. This ability just begs to flip an Arboreal Grazer, or beg. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like, it's such a die roll. Right, right, right. That, but, but again, it's at the end of the day, it's a five five. It's a six six flying triple for five. So worst case scenario, you did all right for yourself. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, I agree. You get even if it draws you, like your your odds of drawing an Arboreal Grazer are just as high, right? So right, right. Inspired ultimatum, sick art. Target player gains. See, this is the closest correlation. The, the closest corollary to to uh, cruel ultimatum in reverse, right? Target yeah. player gains five life. It deals five damage to any target, and you draw five cards. So, I mean, this card is just great. The only thing I think they messed up here is this guy should have been white. Wow. That's a... Yeah. Okay. Well, you can't all be perfect, Rob. Okay. Sorry. Um. Also, the nice thing about this is that, like, you can plus Teferi and then cast this at the end of their turn. Yeah. That's pretty busted. Yeah. End of your turn, I'll Inspired Ultimatum. You can't respond to it, so... That guy needs a guitar. <laughs> um, Why do people keep saying Doom Whisper? What did I miss about Doom Whisper? Oh, six six for five. Oh, it's yeah, a six yeah, six, yeah. six for five, just like Doom Whisper. Yeah. Teamer Adventures was not the best deck in standard for an entire season. Teamer Adventures was the best deck in standard for a couple of weeks. Yeah, like the pa- like and, and like the recently, like the past couple of weeks, like not even. Two two for two. This is the this is this card Rob loves. Kinnan Bonder Prodigy. Two mana for a two two. Whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of that type, of any type that that permanent produced. Uh, so if you tap your Gilded Goose and sack of food, you still make two. If you tap your Land of War Elf that's not in standard, you make two. Uh, for seven <laughs> mana, uh, look at the top five cards of your library. So this is like kind of like a Golos ability, right? Yeah. I put a non-human creature card from among them onto the battlefield, put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. This card is busted in every way possible. Every it's way? So good. Uh, aside from the fact that it doesn't add mana itself. That's it. This card's so good. Uh, it is cool. It's a nice two drop that gives you something to do in the late game. So like the, the worst part about cards like this is like, oh, I top decked it on turn six and I, have, I just, it's just a two, two. Like yeah. even then you get to untap and like, you know, activate the ability if you really need to or. Yeah, this card's going to be bonkers in, in um, formats, um, older formats for sure. Yeah, it's just good. I mean, it's just a solid card. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2. All your mana production makes more, except, you know, when it does come from lands. Labyrinth Raptor, two, another 2-2 two, two for 2 with Menace. Not bad. Whenever a creature you control with Menace becomes blocked, like this guy, oh. the defending player sacrifices a creature blocking it. So this card's good. So this is like this is like triple Menace. So you're going to block with like three creatures. Um... Actually, you know, two creatures will do. You still probably get the... Because it's a 2-2, two, two, but still, that's good. I mean, you're basically... This card almost on its... But then you get to pump it. It trades for two dudes. And it still pumps, too, so... Yeah, this is pretty know. good. Yeah, this card's this card's very good in, like, an aggressive... In, like, the Menace deck. Yeah, That's not a thing. The Menace deck. Labyrinth Raptors. Uh, Lord Dracus. 2-3 three for 3, a Lizard Beast. Whenever this creature mutates, return an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. That's actually pretty good. Especially because his mutate cost is two. Yeah, I don't think it's any good. Interesting. All right. I won't put it on there because I'm not sold on it, but like... Uh... I mean, honestly, the, the, that ability is on a lot of cards and it doesn't... It, it doesn't... Oh, what, people are saying Snapcaster? It's definitely not Snapcaster. It's not instant. Um, yeah, this is not Snapcaster. Yeah, and it has to have a body to mutate onto. No, this isn't. This is not anywhere near Snapcaster. Not even close. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think this is any good. I don't think it's good enough. And the last Planeswalker of the set, Narset of the Ancient Way, one Jeskai mana for a four loyalty Planeswalker plus one. You gain two life. Add blue, red, or white. 
spend this mana only to cast a non-creature spell. So my problem with the Planeswalkers like this is that you're not going to even really take advantage of this ability on the turn. It when it comes to into the play, yeah. You're just going to plus it, gain two, and then pass. Because uh, it's very unlikely that you have a one mana spell that you're going to take advantage of. Because Wizards doesn't make Lightning Bolts, Path to Exiles, or Ancestral Recalls anymore. Um, negative two. Draw a card, then you may discard a card. When you discard a non-land card... You may discard a card, so you don't even have to. When you discard a non-land card this way, Narset of the Ancient Way deals damage equal to the that card's compared to mana cost to a creature or planeswalker. So if they have a questing beast out, you can discard a four, drop, and kill it. For oh, that's two. interesting. So, irregard so regardless, you draw a card. Right. You choose if you want to discard to activate the second part of the of the neg two. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I think I think both 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 these abilities are good so far. That's not um, bad. You get an emblem ne negative six, which again not super hard to get to. Uh, you get an emblem with whenever you cast a non creature spell, this emblem deals two damage to any target. Um, that's just kind of like <laughs> a toned down version of Chandra. Yeah, very bad. Um, and also a toned down version of like the Jace that mills you five whenever you cast a spell. Like both are. I, I don't I don't think as much as I like Narset, I don't I don't think this is that great. I think it's I think it's solid. I think she has a way to protect herself. She has a uh, an how does she? Life. Oh yeah, she can protect herself. Sure, yeah, she can negative. Well, two. but it but it's it's dependent on. Oh, you know what though? You can always so if you have no cards in hand, you can minus draw your card and then discard that card and then protect. choose. Yeah, you can either choose to discard it or not choose to discard it. It's it's close. I think it's good for four mana planeswalker. I think it's. Fine. I think it's a good four mana standard planeswalker. But right now we're we have so many planeswalkers that aren't on right with what standard planeswalkers should be. But I, I also don't think that that should affect her quality. Like, and I think in a vacuum, like this is a good card. You know what I mean? Well, no, I, I'm agreeing with you. I, I think that this is a. I think it is a good card. It just seems <laughs> underpowered compared also, to other things that we have. Like someone said in chat, discarding Arclight Phoenix for this seems pretty good, right? No, Go that's four to something. It's in the graveyard. Um, yeah, and because of her plus one, you do want to play like things like Opt and Shock because they're just one mana. I I guess I could see that. I could see that. Right. It's. Yeah, I I don't know. I think she's versatile. I think she uh, she hits a lot of. She activates all your um, draw two cards as well when she comes into play, cool. so she can protect herself that way too. The 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 cards that if you've drawn your second card per turn, like oh yeah for Alliance, sure. Well, by her negative two, right? Yeah. Well, I'm saying that's another way that she can she can you know she can trigger. I don't know. I, I I'm reaching here. He's reaching. Three three for three for a Necro Panther. <laughs> that's a cat nightmare. Just in case it's you guys looking didn't both know. ways. Whenever this creature mutates, return a creature card, return target creature card with a convertment cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. This is good, and I'll tell you why this one's good. I'm listening. The mutate you get your cost general is back. High. Yeah, you can get your general back. It triggers hero, and at the end of the day, it's a three three for three. Yeah, I don't hate that. This is this is good. It, but it, and also, if you have Kuranos in the deck, which you could play like one or two of because it's just a solid three three for three. Um, you can mutate to this. You can mutate this onto one of your one-one hero tokens. Can't do that because it's a human. No, no, no. Well, not even that. I was gonna say the 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 the, the hound. The hound would stop this ability from occurring. Creatures can't enter the battlefield from the can't. graveyard. You're right. That's not a good. That's a non bow. All right. So I also don't like that. This is uh, you can only mutate into non-humans, right? Because that makes it really hard to mutate this in that deck. Well, is is um is the the two two that makes one ones is that is that a human? Or does she only make humans? The, the two, whenever two, you cast a multicolored spell, what, hero of pre saint one. Uh, I can hear you now. Did it literally just start? Because my video I mean, is not lagging like wait, it was. Yeah, you're fine now. We're good now. But like this card, yeah, hero of pre saint one is a human, dude. It's it's all okay. It's, it's just like in the art and everything. This card this card goes in that deck. This card's great. It gets your heroes back. Like this card's it, really. It good. doesn't though because what do you what do you mutate it onto? Well, I mean, not all every your, card has how, another Necro Panther. How many not? So you cast mm. one and then put one on top of the other. I got. I just gotta look, man. That seems rough. I don't. I don't it think it's stupid that it's not human. I think this card is too narrow because of the not. Like it's funny because they make this 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 black white card that you really want to put in the black white deck that they're literally force feeding you in this set, but then you can't mutate onto a human and it's just, kind I should have, up, I should have upgraded my internet for today only and then I, called back yeah, and canceled it. I agree. This is our first time doing this, man. We'll fix it next time.
Nethroy, Apex of Death. Five mana for a 5-5 Abzan creature. Death Touch and Lifelink. Aaron, yeah, you're selling me. I like these abilities. <laughs> uh, whenever this creature mutates, return any number of target creature cards with total power 10 or less from your graveyard to the... This is fucking ridiculous. Uh, the, the downside... Excuse me. Is that his his mutate cost is seven, so a little bit higher. But you're also making at least a five five. You're giving death touch and life link to something else, and you're getting yeah. ten power of creatures. Ten power is a lot. Seems dude. seems really I'm good. Put it right on the list. Nethroy. Oh, what up, Nethroy? <laughs> what up, Roy? <laughs> yeah, this card seems good. I I mean I don't know what to say. Like it's 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 just as good as the ten power of creatures that are in your graveyard. So I'm I mean I can't imagine. This does not see play. Yeah. No, this will. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Offspring's Revenge. <laughs> uh oh. Is the mother is the mother dead? She's gone. Oh dear. She's gone. Five Mardu mana, two Mardu. Uh at the beginning of combat on your turn, exile a red, white, or black creature card from your graveyard. Um Beginning of combat, exile a martyr creature from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's 1-1. One, one. It gains haste until your next turn. I don't like this card. Seems strong, but it's not. It's for five mana, you're making 1-1s. One, like, I yep. don't know. And yep. you have to have cards in your Thanks. graveyard, otherwise it doesn't do anything. Yep. Oh, Michael B., what up, yo? Almost three and a half years. Also, hello, Rob. You can get your shitbird internet fixed. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Amazing. Yeah, I don't think this card's good. Parcel Beast. What a USPS needs one of these guys. Four mana for a 2-4. Uh, look at the top card of your... One in a tap. Look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, you may put it onto the battlefield. If you don't put that card onto the battlefield, put it into your hand. Why does Simic get all the best stuff? Why? It mutates for two as well. I mean, like... If it's you're not so mutating good. this, you can't really ca you can't really cast it, though, right? It, it has it doesn't have a mutate ability. What do you mean? It's still four, four mana, two, four. Block's good, and it's got, an, it's got a, a great ability. Dude, this card's good. Bitch, Questing Beast costs four mana. This card is good. I don't know, man. It's funny because that's so funny that I'm not sold on this card. This is this. I think this is a really good card. Pay Her one please. mana, draw a card. <laughs> Pay one mana, Coiling Oracle. Right, but you're also paying four mana up front, and it has to survive until the next Dude. turn. Like, yeah. this card is good. He brings you your stuff fast. Look at him. He's even sh he's even shitting out some stuff. Look at him. He's coming all all of his holes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. Okay. So if I mutate this onto a grazer, can I activate it the same turn because the grazer was in yes, play? Yes. If you keep it as an O three. Is that true? Yeah. It matters which creature is on top or the bottom. Yeah, because I I believe I believe the so parcel. No, there. you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe. I can't be right because I'm not sure. I'm asking. <laughs> no, I think I think you're right. And and think about how dumb that is. Turn one, you go grazer, put an extra land. Turn two, you mutate and activate the parcel beast. Yeah, that seems good. That seems yeah. good. That's. But good. it also seems real magical Christmas, man. It's not though. You have four of these in your deck. It's not like you don't want more than. One. Can you imagine if you have two of these out on the battlefield? You pay two mana to draw two cards. This is so good. Uh, I want to build a deck around this. This is so good. My BC Parcelin. All right, I put it on the list because I, I, I'm not sold, but you seem to be pretty up on it. Primal Empath Empathy. Uh, I was going to say Empath, but it's not a creature. So one one in Simic, so one blue-green. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card if you control a creature with the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield. If you don't, put a 1-1 one, one counter on a creature you control. This is just your very typical... This is this has also been a green enchantment. Yeah. Uh, where it's like if you control the greatest creature with power, draw a card. Except for the blue aspect of this is also helping you get there. I like that it. being said, I don't think it's I don't think it's good enough. I don't I don't, I don't think it's good enough, but I like the card. It's yeah, cool same. Design. Right, I agree. Uh, Quartzwood Crasher, five mana for a six six with Trample. I like it. Whenever <laughs> one or more creatures you control with Trample deal combat damage to a player, like this guy, create an XX Green Dinosaur Beast creature token with Trample, where X is the amount of damage those creatures dealt to that player. So if this guy attacks and they have no blocker, you just make a 6-6? Six, six? Yep. This seems really good for 5 mana. Yeah, it seems really good, actually. Yeah, that's a, it's a little scary. I know you like big dumb idiots. This guy does seem pretty good, though. 
<laughs> I do like big dumb idiots in Magic. I know. Man. That's why we. That's why we hang out. Yeah. Because <laughs> wait, like, are you the big dumb idiot? No, you like big dumb idiot. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm the. Oh. Yeah, see, I'm the big dumb idiot. Wow. <laughs> Regal Leosaur. Two, two for two. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, other creatures you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. That's a that's a lot of power and toughness in a red white deck. I mean, it's an inspiring, repeatable though. Yeah, I guess. It's a, a I, of... again in my head. It just comes down to how many times you're going to mute. What if you mutate a regal Leosaur onto another regal Leosaur? It would trigger twice. That's see, that's a lot, especially because yeah. it's just a two-two for two. So, yeah. All right, I'm going to put this on the list because I think it does have potential. Yeah, I, yeah. Especially if there's any instant speed mutate cards, right? Like, there's not a thing. Is there a thing? Is that a thing? I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna. Okay. I, I don't even have to go over this card. I'm just gonna write it on the list immediately. Yeah, this card's busted. This is probably, uh, in my opinion, well, there's two cards in my opinion that are the most busted in this set, and this is one of them. What's the other one? Have we gone over it yet? No, we haven't gone over it yet. Wow, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is an O three for three. So uh, stupid. Human wizard. Uh, oh, she. Riel the Everwise gets plus one plus O for each instant or sorcery card in your graveyard. So it's definitely never going to be an O3. It's going to probably be a 2 3, a 3 3, a 5 3, whatever. Whenever you discard one or more cards for the first time each turn, draw that many cards. So if you play a Cathartic Reunion, uh, not only does she get plus one plus O from the Cathartic Reunion, but you discard two cards and you draw five cards. This card's so stupid. So. So good. I, I don't. Yeah, like this card is. Actually, oh, also, every time you scry, you draw two, or you every time you cycle, you draw two. Rather, it's this card is ridiculous. Yeah, this card's nutter, nutter butters. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I would be very surprised if this didn't see play in multiple formats. Yeah, going to get banned. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't think this is this is this is just a creature. It's still just a creature. It's an oh, yeah. it's a three toughness creature. It's definitely not going to get banned. Um. Ruinous Ultimatum, Mardu Mana, destroy all non-land permanents your opponents control. Again, this is great for Commander because it's all opponents, right? Yeah, that's um, pretty bad. This is still good in Standard, though, right? Seven Mana just wiped your entire board of Planeswalkers, creatures, enchantments, etc. Yeah, it seems pretty darn good. Pretty game-winning. So one-sided... Also, Go ahead. I was just going to say Mardu is, is, is pretty easy to build a more controlling deck, too, where you can just get to seven yeah. and not really... There are a lot of gold cards that have been good so far. Yeah, this is, I mean, I don't know, enough said. Like, it's a seven mana spell it's that good. destroys yeah. all their non land permanents, should be on there. right? Um, the only problem I see with this is if they do have some Nissa tokens, some 3-3s, three it won't kill them because they are lands, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, Savai Thundermare. Main. Thunder Main. This guy's mained. 3-2 uh, two for 2. Whenever you cycle a card, you may pay 2. When you do, it deals 2 damage to target creature and you gain 2 life. I mean the three two for two is is fantastic. I I don't see that ability coming up too much. I don't, but like having an onboard shock, like a repeatable shock effect on a creature, is pretty good, especially like <laughs> you'd have to look at the cards in those two colors because it's essentially going into an aggro deck, right? A three two for two and Boros color. Well, it doesn't it's... have to. We can actually just go in a cycling deck, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. Again, you gotta you got. It's you know fragile. What? It, it is fragile though. It is fragile though. That's the problem. Like it's too tough. Put it on there, right? So. Put right, it on I'll, there. I'll put it on there. It could be playable. Put it on there. Yeah, give it death touch. Yeah, for sure. Cycle. Yeah, you cycle. Give it a death touch token. Oh, also, this is another Torbrand card, right? Like when you yeah. cycle a card, it deals five damage. But is it's it, only creatures. No, four damage. No, it deals four damage. Yeah, but it's still, four damage gain four. Two. Well, you gain two, right? You're not getting four. Torbrand's not getting. Oh life. yeah, you're right. What am I thinking? It's not a helix. Yeah, that'd be wild. Skull Prophet, 3-1 for a black and a green. Add a black or a green. Or put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Good card, kind of. I would just wish it was a 1-3. Like, 3-1 doesn't lend itself to what this thing is trying to do. Right, like, I don't want to... I, am I, like, you're, you're forcing me to choose between attacking or adding mana with this. Because it's not blocking. <laughs> right, you're not blocking with it, right. Yeah, that's um, all right. It's not better than Paradise Druid. It's not better than, like, Leafkin Druid. I mean... No, it's not. I, it's not good. No. I mean, the top two card portion might be relevant at some point, but I don't. I don't think it's better. It doesn't make it better than the other ones. Uh, Skycat Sovereign, one one for two. It gets plus one plus one for each other creature you control with flying. 
create a 1-1 one, one white cat bird token. With I think this card's great. You don't like this card? This card's bonkers. Oh, okay. I thought you were shaking your head like, no, this isn't very good. No, this card's like, bonkers. This card seems good, man. This this is honestly the cat card. Birds. Yeah, this is probably honestly the card that the blue white flyers deck was missing. One large, huge it also, threat. They also don't have a lot of great two drops. Yeah. Like you have a bunch of good three drops and you have a couple one drops, I think, but I don't know how many. There's two a lot drops of ones. There's a lot of good ones. There but are a lot of good ones. There are a lot of good ones. This card's bonkers. Definitely should be on the list. It can take over a game by itself. <laughs> yeah, this is an upgrade from like uh, Pride of the Clouds, right? Yeah, like, Pride of the Clouds. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that guy's on the Slither Wisp. Three, two, black, black, blue, flash. Uh, whenever. Also, can we just play a Demir or a Saltilus with a bunch of cool flash shit in it? Like, even if you just play like Slither Wisp and like uh, Frilled Mystic and Lock Mirror Serpent, like that would just be living the dream, right? Whenever you cast another spell that has flash, you draw a card and each opponent loses one life. And this is like the the central piece of that deck, right? This card's really good, yeah. And also, it just has to have flash. It doesn't have to be cast with flash, right? So I can go end of turn this creature, then just main phase a, a four drop with flash. Yeah. And still draw the card. I yeah, like this, this card is a lot. Yeah. The, but, the, but I don't think you can run it with Frill Mystic. You can't. Maybe. Why why, I, don't I know. mean, dude, we got, we got Trilands. Yeah, maybe. I don't see why not. Yeah. I could see it. You also have... Do we have Woodland Cemetery? Woodland Cemetery is legal in this format, right? No, 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 no. Over oh, it's Dominary, too. right? Yeah, okay. only over him, too. So you have temple, you have Temples and, and the Shocklands. I think it's fine. Snap Dax, Apex of the Hunt. Here's the Mardu Legendary Dinosaur Cat Nightmare. What a... What a what a type, man. What a type. Four mana, one Mardu, and for a three five double striker. Whenever this creature mutates, it deals four damage to a creature or planeswalker and opponent controls, and you gain four life. Apparently the red the red white uh combination has a theme of like dealing four gaining four. Or dealing damage and gaining life, rather. Yeah. I mean, this is a good card, I think. Um Mardu colors, three five double strike for four is really strong. Yeah, and depending then... on what you mutate it onto, like that will yeah. also get double strike. Yeah. I think this is fine like i still think it's good it's, it, it should go on the list i mean you just have to look and see if there's a mardu deck i think i mean it's the, definitely a strong mardu creature with double strike it's essentially a six five for four right yeah it's really good and you can mutate onto it later with any kind of cheap creature so yep snap decks apex of the hunt give me give me one second real quick dude give me give me 30 seconds okay all right so we got snap decks on the list Song of Creation. This is another one of the, the enchantment cycle. Uh, four mana, you may play an additional land on each of your turns. Whenever you cast a spell, draw two cards, and at the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. I This, I, this is the other card that I think is just utterly busted. That's weird to me. I don't know. I just don't love discarding my hand at the end of my turn. I like I don't like having no options. Like, I mean, you you really got to build... This is, a, this is a very strong build-around card, right? Like, where people are like... Okay. Oh, I, it is. It is. It's definitely a build around, but it's. I. I think that this card is just bonkers. Hmm. Like I look at um, what's the name of um, there this the Thank oh you. so a card like Thousand Year Storm right that card when you build around it right that card does just bonkers things that when it goes off you can't do anything to stop it right it's it's like oh I hope they fizzle or something. Obviously, that's not a good card. That that was never really standard playable. This card costs four mana. You can put it down on turn three because of Growth Spiral. And this card, to me, can just go off. And I think it has that same ability that a Thousand Year Storm deck does. But it's a lot more convenient to cast on the four. And it's doing other stuff. Yeah, my concern is that like you're going to put it down on three. You're going to have to discard a few cards because there's no way you're emptying your hand on turn three, right? So you're going to discard sure. three or four cards. And then if they go to their turn and have some way to destroy this, like Assassin's Trophy or something, like, you're just so far behind. I I, I, I get that. I can see that. The, the the problem is once that you're top decking every turn, you hit a land. Is Right, if you, you discard your card, you go to your turn, you draw. You draw a land. You play your land, and that's it, right? Like, you're... you've It forces you to be at the mercy of your top deck because you have to hit a spell. Sure. Or else you don't have any more gas. Sure. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, I think the limitations on this are just too great. The beginning of your end step discarding your whole hand is very, very bad. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I just think there's got to be a way. There's got has to be a way that this card gets broken, and it's just nutty. Right, but the point is, like, you have to combo out with it. Otherwise, this is not like an attrition card because, like, 
Um, the attrition spells you're going to be playing, like four mana cards, um, it doesn't matter if you draw two because you're not going to be playing anything after that, right? Like, so if I like top deck a Nissa and I play Nissa, the, drawing two cards from that doesn't matter because I'm just going to have to discard them because I don't have more mana to do yeah. to do other stuff with, right? So you're going to play like opts or shocks, and you're going to have like these cheap spells that get you through the deck really quickly. But like, I don't know what deck that's going to be. Oh wow, yeah. If you use this with the uh, the other broken card, when you discard your hand at the end of st in yeah. step, you draw all cards again. Yeah, for sure. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Teamer Adventures. Yeah, we got it. We know that works. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to put it on the list because I think it, it does have a lot of potential, but yeah. um, I think it also needs a lot to like make it work because again, it's it is an enchantment that just sits on the board where like they can easily kill it and. Yeah, you, you you have to invest a lot in the beginning if you still have like a bunch of cards in your hand for being early. Yeah, I, I'm I'm excited to try and build something with this though. Sprite Dragon one one for two flying haste. Whenever you cast an on creature spell, put a one one counter on this. This could get out of hand pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, if you haste. just go shock opt or like removal spell opt or something, it's just a three three. Yeah, yeah, I'm and gonna put haste. I'm gonna put this guy on the list too because if yep, there is I a, like uh, and if the if the blue white flyers deck just becomes jeskai flyers instead then like this definitely mm -hmm. has a home there too titan's nest this is the sultai enchantment uh four mana for an enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep look at the top card of your library you would put that card in your graveyard this is basically sultai ascendancy right there mm -hmm. exile a card from your graveyard add a colorless spend this mana only to cast a colored spell without x in its mana cost this card is bonkers so i can excel like i play this on four on turn five i can exile like three cards and make eight mana like this card with cavalier of night or uh cavalier of thorns it, this is so stupid dude why do we continue to give simic these these cards these abilities it's also ridiculous. like just the, the ability to mitigate the top card of your library and just like yeah it's basically like a, i mean it's, it's it's a four mana search for his counter right where you're like able to look at the top yeah, card and... exactly exactly but it lets you cheat the hell out of your out of your mana like you can repeatedly like maybe if it said do this only once a turn, but it also lets you like if you have like essence scatter or something in hand, it also lets you go to their opponent's step with one blue mana and also yeah keep up counter mana, yeah yeah that's pretty good. I like this card this a lot. Card's this card's so pretty good. sweet. It's so good. Every spell has delve. That's a great way to put it. <sighs> that's interesting. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's a really fascinating way to put it. Yeah. You exile cards in your graveyard to pay the mana. Wow. That's crazy. That's a great way to put it. Trumpeting Gnar, another 3-3 three, three for 3. Whenever this creature mutates, create a 3-3 three, three beast token. It seems pretty good. Okay, but, but here's the thing, all right? Again, let's use our 1-1 one, one example. You have this 3-3, three, three, you mutate it onto a 1-1, one, one, and you make another 3-3. Three, three. So you basically combine the 1-1 one, one and the 3-3 three, three to make a 3-3, three, three, right? So I wouldn't look at it that way, though. You're trading think... whatever card you mutate this onto... Four or three, three. Yeah, but you don't. But you're thinking of it backwards. You could play this on turn three and then mutate a parcel beast onto it and get a three, three. Right, but then you're you're still. But then your parcel beast is just becoming a three, three. Right, it's the same thing. Whatever creature you mutate, you're you're trading the two creatures. The two creatures go to form one, and then you're gonna get three, three out of it. So you're yeah. Sacrificing so if you one mutate this, to if make you a mutate three, three. this, you're paying five mana for a three, three, which is crappy. Right. Yeah. You, you never get... come out ahead. You're just trading whatever power and toughness for to make a three. Th it's really hard to evaluate these cards, the mutate cards, because of this, right? It is. Because the value you get out of the mutation has to be more than the creature you're giving up. Yeah. And the value here is a 3-3. Three, three. So the 3-3 three, three has to be better than the creature you're giving up. Yep. And I don't know how many times a generic 3-3 three, three is going to be better. So I don't know. Yeah. And this is a 3-3. Three, three. So if I have a 6-6... Six, six, I have no incentive to mutate this onto the onto the 6-6 six, six because I could just play it as a 3-3 three, three for 3, right? Yeah. It's just better on its face. So, yeah, I don't know. It's tough to evaluate. I agree. It, the, the, only other, the only other part is that, like, this, since it does have mutate, if a card says, hey, gain 10 life whenever you mutate or deal 15 damage whenever you mutate... This gives you an incentive to mutate onto that card and still get the 3-3, three, three, right? So it's like... You, you get the extra creature. What do you mean you get the extra creature? Yeah, I don't know what that means. Like, 
you still have two. You're coming out with two creatures one way or the other, right? Right, because you're mutating onto one and you're making one. And you're making another. Or you're just playing, you're hard casting this and you have the other. So it's like we either don't, way. We don't getting... hate, we don't hate mutate. We're using logic uh, without experience to try and understand how things would play out in the games. And it's, it's hard to do that by just reading a card. And, and honestly, the, the ability itself is as confusing as can be. So that's not helping either. Oh, it was a joke. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cause I was going to be like, well, I don't hate it. The only reason you think I hate it is because I'm explaining these situations out and they're not coming out favorably for mutate. So like uh, the only reason you think I hate it is because I'm actually logically explaining the mechanic and how it yeah. works. Right. So yeah, I don't know. It's weird, man. Vadrock apex of thunder, elemental dinosaur cat. Uh, this is just a three, Ow. three for three again. Boy, this is a really common dude. The three threes for three in this set. There has to be like 23 threes for three in this set, right? <laughs> it's uh, You've said it a lot, that's for sure. Flying first strike. Whenever this creature mutates, you may cast a non-creature card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. I mean, a three three for three flying first strike is pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's good. It's, it's very uh, Mantis Rider on its own, right? Ah, that's not bad. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have haste, obviously, but... Um... You gotta again, find the deck, right? I'm trying to evaluate, right? Because I have to pay four mana to put this on top of something. Like again, if I mutate it onto a two two, the two two has to be worse than the than the card with converted mana cost three or less, right? That's that's what I keep coming unless I'm unless I'm for some reason thinking about it all wrong. All because right, it's not out, like if they... out, let's play let's play this scenario out. Let's play this scenario out. Okay. Give me give me a two drop. A two drop that would go in this deck. So our deck is Jeskai Flyers. Right, so the only spells I could think were flashing back from the graveyard would be that three mana draw card, maybe well, wind it's, words. It's a non-creature card, so it could be a planeswalker, but it's not going to be a creature, right? And that, okay, that deck has so, a ton of creatures, so it could be um, royal silence. Let's say we have royal silence in our graveyard. Sure. Okay, so how are we? How are we? How are you not? Maybe not understanding this. Me? Yeah, yeah. You were saying maybe I'm. Maybe I'm not. No, I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out because it seems too obvious that it's like you're just trading one card for whatever the ability is. Because like if they use a removal spell, you're losing both creatures. So this is the mutate is basically eating whatever creature is there originally, right? Like and it says like, well, you get the abilities, but like a lot of times only the abilities is like a triggered ability. So that's the ability you're getting when they mutate, right? Yeah. And I think the biggest thing you want to do is mutate onto other mutate ability, other mutate creatures so that you right, get the double stack, generally. right. So you're getting two triggers. That's like how you get the most out of them. These right, trigger we know, when you know you keep, right, of course. That's we know point. that you keep the the ability underneath. It's just I mean, just generally Voltron Voltron's not a thing. That's not a, that's not a winning strategy. Mutate is only good when you stack the mutates onto one another. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of getting at because like otherwise you're literally just trading one for one. It, you're playing a spell rather than a a creature, right? You can mutate onto a creature with haste, and you have this card's abilities and power. T that is correct, and you would have haste on this creature too. Sure, that that's a thing, but yeah, I don't know. It's hard to evaluate. I'd like to see it in action first, and then I can really kind of figure out if it's like, if it's like literally just, because it's, you're also putting all your eggs in one basket, right? Like if I mutate this onto something else, and then they just doom blade it, like, all right, well they're both feels Batman, right? It feels bad, right? As opposed to me just playing this as a three three first striker uh -huh. for three. This does seem good with the octopus. I agree with that. The two two octopus yeah. uh, that, that draws, draws cards, cards. Seems pretty sure, good. Sure, sure. Again, I I think we're seeing a Jeskai or at least a blue white um, flyers deck. Absolutely, absolutely. I feel I, I feel like I can't inc not include this guy because on its face it's just a strong creature. No, you should include it. hundred yeah. percent. Whirlwind of Thought. This is the uh, Jeskai enchantment. This one's also very strong. Four mana. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, draw a card. Yeah, I mean this is this seems better than the teamer one, right? Like, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, draw two cards. This one's draw one card, but you don't have to discard your hand. And so I don't know why I wouldn't just err on the side of this one instead. Like this just seems like a the very other one draws two cards, right? But you discard your hand. Yeah, I I think I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen this card. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, like this card uh, just seems great to me. I don't know. Like this seems every really... counter spell lets you draw every every counter spell becomes cryptic command with this in play, right? This seems really bonkers. Teferi draws you a card? Like Yeah, this card seems really good. I think Rob's brain just broke. 
<laughs> I'm just <laughs> No, I'm lagging. I'm lagging. The teamer one feels your guard if you knew that. Yeah, sure, but I don't want to feel it by way of discarding my entire hand. Like one with nothing also feels your Are you fucking around or did you really freeze? Oh, he did actually really freeze. Good lord. Oh man. I can't tell if you were joking when you said you were lagging at first because you definitely started lagging after that. But now no, that good. was just com that was comedic timing by my internet. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, cuz like yeah, cuz like it's like saying one with nothing also feels your graveyard. I'm like, yeah, it does, but the cost is too high. <laughs> So, and I I have to assume we're coming. There's got to be a like a what is it? Z Zagoda, Zagoda? Zagoth. That's the that's the new song. Zagoth. 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 Winona. I said Winona because I wanted to make a joke, but then yeah. I, I was afraid people would think I didn't know how to say Winoda. Winata. Winoda. Yeah. Joiner of forces. Four 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 four. Another common trope in this in this set. Uh, for a human warrior, whenever a non-human creature you control attacks, so if my bear attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. That's a lot. Wow. You may put a human creature card from among them onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. It gains indestructible. What? Put the rest of the cards in the bottom of your library in a random... See, th this is interesting because it's forcing you to have a, a, a really a sizable mix of both red or uh, humans and non-humans, right? A non-human creature has to attack... In order to find a human creature, so like this is you, so good. You have to have a good mix of both. This I mean, it is really because good. you can play this on four, and then also attack with your three drop that you put into play, like your savage knuckle blade, because that guy's not a human clearly. And then you can put a human onto the battlefield. So wow. I mean, as long as you can have a good mix of humans and non-humans, I think this is really strong. Yeah, this seems really good. Again, though, you're not attacking until turn five. Like, what? you can look at Hactos. No, what? what are you talking about? Not attacking with this until it's for five. It says whenever a non-human creature you control attacks. Oh. No, you play this oh. on four and attack with your three drop on turn... F yeah, I mean, like, this triggers immediately when you cast it. As long as you're attacking with a non-human from a turn wow. two or three. This is good. Yeah, this is even better than you just thought. Yeah, this is good. This is this is very good. And looking at six cards, like, six is a lot. That's, I mean, from, a, from your starting point, that's 10% of your deck. So, I mean, you know, it's probably closer to 12 to 15 percent of your deck you know by the turn you cast this so yeah that's this is good and the fact that it gets indestructible is great because it's not just gonna you're not just gonna run your two two that you found into like their three three so oh Doesn't tulsimir is on? a sweet one wow the problem yeah. with tulsimir i see is that naya is not heavily represented in this set because it's all the cons the cons wedges and not the alara shards so um You'd probably want something in either Mardu or Jeskai to to go along with this because you just have you're just gonna have better mana. You're gonna have better better gold cards and dual dual cards. So uh, whenever a non-human creature you control attacks, does this trigger for every single one? If I have like three non-human no creatures, there's no way. There's no way. But they, I think it does. Yeah, I think it triggers for each. Because it doesn't say whenever any number of non-human creatures you control attack, look at the top six cards. It says whenever A, you, so if it says, if you attack with three, that's three creatures attacking. Look at the top six. Yeah, you're right, it does. That yeah, is, because this they, is they specify stuff like that. This is that's, dumb. That's pretty wild, dude. This wow. is a card that's gotten better twice in our evaluation of it. Like, it's just, it's improved <laughs> enhance. two times. Enhance, enhance, Once. enhance. <laughs> Zenith Flare, two uh, red white. It deals X for an instant. It deals X damage to any target, and you gain X life or X is the number of cards with a cycling ability in your graveyard. Interesting. So there's definitely like the a red. There's definitely a red white cycling deck that seems or to Jeskai. exist. Or Jeskai, right? Because then you get the uh, essence cap. Mm, I'm gonna look it up right now. Twister, essence. escape protocol. That's the one. And and Sharknado. Is this playable, Zenith Flare? If there's a cycling, a, a dedicated cycling deck, like in the past standard where we had um, the cycling deck where you could play that in, uh, artifact and it lets you cast your cards you cycled in your graveyard. I, I don't think it's, this is too expensive, nor do I think it's draft shaft. I mean, uh, this this is equivalent to War Leader's Helix, which was definitely a playable card. Uh, War Leader's Helix was definitely in, in certain decks in standard uh, as a four mana deal three, gain three. Or deal four, gain four, I think. Um and so turtle. this is very likely that this will deal more than four damage at certain points because 
Uh, Warlord is great, but he says unconditional. Yes, but like if you're building a deck around this, this is definitely dealing four. If you can't, if you haven't cycled four cards by the time you're really, really casting this, like I think your your deck probably is terrible anyway. So I think this is definitely as good as the deck you're putting it in. Yeah, Katie, I'm not sure you're playable. This card will play. Wow, that was so rude of her. I'm sorry, I take it back. Oh, of her. I wow. Take, take What's Blitz of the Thunder Raptor? What did that guy do? Because I really don't think they're. That's the number of cards in your graveyard, though, right? Like, But you can also cycle sorceries and creatures, right? I'm a pack one, pick one, pick Robert. One. <laughs> it's true. She is. Robert! She's my favorite. And is that the last card? Oh, no, we got hybrids. Good lord, man. This is Alert Heed Bonder. 2-4 for 3 with Vigilance. At the beginning of your end step, you gain a life for each creature you control with Vigilance. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm going to keep going. Cunning Night Bonder, Demir Demir. Cunning neighbor. Cunning neighbor. Cunning neighbor. Demir Demir for a 2 2 with flash. Flash, huh? Spells with flash you cast cost one less to cast and can't be countered. That's strong. I was ready to overlook <laughs> this, but that seems really good. That does seem strong. Holy crap, dude. Frilled Mystic can't be countered. Lockmere Serpent can't be countered. The Slither, Slither Wisp can't be countered. Also, isn't cost reduced. Well, that one doesn't, sure. Neither does Frilled Mystic. But, I mean, the other ones do. Hey, this makes your shark playable. It costs four and it can't it be countered? It four. Oh, yeah. This card is... This card is... Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm loving it. This is McDonald's oh, for me, bro. That's right. Fiend Artisan. Oh, of course you're not done. Yeah, this card. Uh, Yeah, Demir Demir... This card... Yeah, this... Yeah. Demir Demir... Uh, Golgari Golgari... For a 1-1, one, one, it gets plus one, plus one for each creature card in your graveyard. Does that strike you as a very Tarmogoyf-esque feeling? Uh, it strikes me... It, it kind of strikes me as better ability. than Tarmogoyf. Let's, let's Tarmogoyf finish this guy off. Uh, yeah, it is Mythic as well. Uh, X and Golgari. Hold on, I gotta read these kitty comments. Frank was way too hopeful that the last card... The, that that was the last card. I'm like, oh, is that the end? Oh no, hybrids. And Katie said, yeah, blue-black might be sweet, and I agree with her. Uh, except we're adding green to the to the blue-black as well. Um, Fiend Artisan, uh, sacrifice another creature. So if I pay four and a Golgari mana, and I tap it, I sacrifice a creature, I'll sacrifice my 1-1. One, one. It doesn't say non-token. It doesn't, it doesn't say any. Yeah, it doesn't care. Sacri search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less. Put it onto the battlefield. This is really fucking good. Yeah, yeah, it is. Really good. Overrated? Like, this is just better than Bant Arcbow. <laughs> or, or, why did I say Bant? But, like, Arcbow. Overrated? Like, even if you have two creatures in your graveyard, this is a 3-3 three, three for two, right? So, that's <laughs> yeah. your baseline. But then it also has a... It has a Green Sun Zenith on the card. What? Like, how is that overrated in any way, shape, or form? That's insane, dude. This card is bonkers, <laughs> dude. Can you imagine in a, in a in a format like modern or something like that where you have so much so many things you can you can tutor up? This is this card is amazing because it's good it's good in the early game and it's good in the late game. Like yeah, it's good when you have one creature in your graveyard, make it a two two for two. Uh, it's good in the late game when you have six creatures and twelve mana, and then you're just like, I guess I'll tap all my Nissa mana and sacrifice my Gilded Goose to make a. Jesus, what name? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. Whatever you want, really. Questing Beast. That's wild, dude. Yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. Card's sweet. It's overrated only if you have it higher than Nut Scatter. Yeah, the people, I feel like the people saying it's overrated are like the edgelords who want to be contrarian because, like, they've heard their friends talking about it, like, all month and they're like, yeah, man, it's it's not that good. Like, I, I, I've been brewing <laughs> standard for, like, the couple of weeks now and I just don't think it's that good, man. Like, <laughs> Uh, like I've played it. I've played at least uh, like 20, a, 30, it's 20, like 30 a, matches. It's a it's base power toughness is like a one one, and you gotta like have other creatures to your graveyard. So I just I don't think it's that great. Meanwhile, like the format has like Cavalier of Thorns and Euro and like all these cards that want to be in the graveyard or go to the graveyard, and it's like uh, it seems bad to get Euro. Why? Like it gives you plus one plus one, and like I mean, you, just because you're you don't want to escape it because it makes this guy a little smaller, but like you still have a Euro. Like I don't think that's any. Hold the on. worst worst case scenario, this guy goes to a one one. Like last right, time I cool. checked, last time I checked, late game, if you use a, uh, an O two to to fetch an Uro, yeah, it dies. 
and then you bring it back and right, you have you an just Uro. escape it, right? Like, it doesn't go away. And then your Fiend Artisan stays on the board. Like, it's not yeah. a, a star star where if you have no creatures in your graveyard, it dies. It's always a 1 1, man. Like, this card's this card's great. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Someone in chat just said you can sack Uro and, or, or Croxa in response to their trigger. That's that's oh, just. No, that's you can't. Single... No, you, no, you can't. Yes, you can. No, because. Absolutely. It, activate this ability only in the time you can cast a sorcery, my dude. Oh, you're right. Wow. Otherwise, like, end of turn, like, in response to oh. removal, like, they could kill something and you're just like, I'll sack it in response. Yeah, that'd be but, dumb. Dude, even despite that, like, I've, yeah, obviously I've known that this entire time, but that's fine. Like, can you imagine this card if you could just be like, end of your turn, I'll sacrifice my gilded this card's goose butters. to. Better butters. Yeah, this card's great. And if you think it's overrated, you're probably going to get crushed by it's it in the coming great. months. Uh, Garuda? Doom of Depths, six mana for. How are you gonna give me this Demir creature without flash? <laughs> this is bull crap. Fail. Uh, six mana for a six six Demon Kraken. That's a chef's kiss of a of a creature type. Scary. Companion. Your starting deck contains only cards with even converted mana costs. Uh, converted what, Rob? Mana costs. I'm this sorry. Is... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Correct. Cost says Chad Bradbury. Thank you so much for the reset, buddy. I didn't. I totally forgot because Rob was in a Rob was in a monologue at the time. But thank you so much for the reset, buddy. Really appreciate it. Trojan that's, Rage that's one, my dude. Um, seventy three months. That's a lot, dude. Holy hell! It is a hell. Lot. Chad what kind of cuss words can you say in that? What cuss words are you able to say in chat? It's all, yeah, all of them. Okay. Uh, when this enters the yeah. battlefield, each player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. So you're milling four. Uh, put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among them onto the battlefield under your control. So it's just like, it's just a 6-6 six, six that you both mill four and then you get to reanimate something, right? Seems good, but I mean... You know who has an even converted mana cost? Ulamog. The Fiend Artisan. Hunger. Questing Beast. Oh, did you see this new Robbie emote that I made? You have a Robbie emote? Shut up. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> oh. oh my god. <laughs> Got him. Oh god. Oh man. God. <laughs> the... <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's having a good time. He's That's having, crazy. He's having a good time. Immortalized. Oh, man. That's good <laughs> stuff. That's good stuff. <coughs> oh, it's funny. Thank you. Someone said, no, you can't. What's the, what was the, what was the comment there? I don't even know. It was a Only reanimate from the four cards you milled. Oh, uh. Oh yeah, put a creature card with an even critical cost for among those onto the battle. Put a creature card. Oh, that sucks. That's crap. That's, that's oh crap. well, it's among the, the yeah. I, I don't like that, but it is from among their cards too. So it's their four and your four. Oh, but still, like that's really narrow. Like you just might not that's hit no an good. even cost creature, right? That's no good. Yeah, I'm out. That's no good. And for that reason, We're I'm out. also out. Gigantha, the Wellspring, Elemental Elk, five mana for a five five. Uh, no card in your starting deck has more than one of the same mana symbol in its cost. Yeah, that seems good. Uh, tap five. Add five. This mana can't be spent to pay generic mana costs. Is this, <laughs> is this any good? I don't even know. I mean, is niv it any good? <laughs> it... Oh, Golos? That's... Oh, that's interesting. Well, I mean, you're never going to... This can't cast Golos. No, but it activates it. Two more mana. No card in your deck has more than one of the same mana symbol. So, so basically, you want it's a it's a nib mizzet like a nib mizzet fire deck. So basically, it means you can't have three green green in the casting cost, right? Exactly. Yeah, it can. You can only have one so one. You can mana have, symbol you can have Teferis. You can have uh, D Sparks. You can have all kinds of things in the deck. But... Oh yeah, Kaya's Wrath, D Spark. Um... Uh, agonizing remorse, thoughts, thought, um, thought erasure, Teferi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this card just seems, 
This card just seems free, right? Like, you have to not play Bedevil, right? But then otherwise it's free. Yep. Tyrant Scorn. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna put this on the on the on the list, right? Like this seems. Good. I would, I would. Yeah, I. G A N T Gigantha the Wellspring. Gigantha. Yeah. Gigantha. I don't know why I said it like that, but we're gonna keep moving. Keep moving. Oh wow, I haven't seen this card either. Jubilant Skybonder, three mana for a two-two flyer. Again, could go into the flyer deck. Creatures you control with flying, uh, I guess it will have spells your opponents cast that target them. Cost two more to cast. Oh wow, this is just like a. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's really good actually. That's, that's really pretty good. Jesus, like that if makes... you go, dude. If I'm playing even against a deck with removal, if I go turn one, dude. Turn two, dude. Dude. Turn three, this. Dude, dude, like dude. that's hard to come back. Yeah, this is also um. It, it how that makes Dream Trawler even harder to kill. God, Jesus, it was already difficult. Yeah, I just diddle Dream Trawlers. I just diddle Dream Trawlers. Okay, yeah, this card's good. This card just goes into that deck. Kahira, the Orphan Guard, uh, three mana for a three two. Each creature card your start in your starting deck is a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or a beast. Um, can it be more than that? If it's like a beast dog, I gotta think so. Does that count? It doesn't say it can only be those. It says it has to be those. Okay, yeah. Then that, I I would assume that's fine. Yep. I'd have to just look and see. <laughs> I'm fucking laughing at this Robbie mode, dude. It's um, great. Vigilance and each other creature you control that's a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast gets plus one, plus one, and has vigilance. That's a strong creature. Three, two, vigilance for three. And it's a lord. It's a it's a three two vigilant lord for three that just gets to that you get that gets free right. Yeah, dog isn't a creature. That, that's messed up. Yeah. Um, for the I'd companion to... cards, they're not like commanders in that like when they die you can exile them and play them again, right? They just no, go to the graveyard. it's a okay. one time thing. Yep. And also they're also they're also in your sideboard. Um, I'm pretty sure Kahira's hips don't lie, so <laughs> I'm gonna put it on the list. You could play multiple dough. Wait, what do you mean? Someone just said you can play multiple dough. But you can't play, like, multiple in the sideboard, right? You just put one No, in the you can sideboard, only play right? one. Wait. That's... Like, you can't have four Kahiras in the sideboard, right, and cast them all from their sideboard? If this card is, if this card is chosen... You can cast as it your comp- once. No, 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 game. because you're choosing that one as your companion. Okay, you can't have multiple companions. No, but you can run three in the main and then one on the board, but that guess that wouldn't even make sense. Because you can cast this at any time, right? So it's basically well, if we want, if we want, it's also legendary, so it's like even it's worse yeah. for that as well. Okay, okay, still good. yeah, I still put it on the list because it's still good. Karuga, the macro sage. Look at this. Look at this fat daddy. Dinosaur hippo. So it is a dinosaur. I could put it in my Kahira deck. Uh, five four, and, and it triggers because of Kahira. Your starting deck contains only cards that convert mana cost three or greater, so I can't put it in my Kahira deck. Uh, yes, you can. Car- it's well, not I, your companion. I, well, I can, but I'm not going to. It doesn't no. make any sense. When Karuga, the macro stage enters battlefield, draw a card for each other permanent you control with convert mana cost three or greater. I feel like a lot of the companion cards were um, deliberately like toned down a little bit, so they're not like super. They're not super powerful, you know, mm-hmm. because like you're not going to have that many permanents that cost three or greater by the time you cast this. You probably have like two. Yeah. The nice thing is it does trigger on itself because yes. it's, it's always going to draw you at least one. Yep. And so it's, it's a free card from outside the game that draws you one. So it, it essentially you're drawing, you're, you're netting two cards from this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Five, four body and drawing a card. It's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. I agree. I think this card's good. Is the card good? Yeah, definitely. It's a free card. Yeah, it's there. The problem is you don't get to play two or one mana cards. So a lot of removal, a lot of like, counter spells like essence no, no, scatter no, that's, things that's only if it's well i guess because you were saying it's a free card but yeah the value that's only is if it's your companion companioning, right but like are you playing this if it's not your companion are you just putting it in your deck i mean maybe it, it fits in the other companion that we just passed that's pretty darn good it becomes a six five vigilance <laughs> <laughs> what, you, what were you able to hear that no i was looking at the i was looking at your emote with glasses on it my emote with glasses. Yeah, it says "looking slick," Rob, in the chat, and it's got. Oh, because your... someone edited it. Yeah. Look. 
Look what Frank Frank immortalized me. Look. You do lose a sideboard slot, but I don't think you. I, I think losing one sideboard slot in standard is not the. I, I think that's pretty. <laughs> probably too slow as a companion. Decent in the sixty though. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I think it's good in the sixty. All right, I'm gonna add it to the list. Karuga. Karuga. And everyone, everyone is already saying. I mean, I'm sure everyone's heard it, but everyone's already saying this card in 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 the fires of uh, Jeskai Fires deck is just it's it's just almost oh, a free. Oh, I like that. Because all the adventure you just play them on five, and then like, well, Jeskai Fires, or the Fires deck, or the the Adventures deck. No, Jeskai Fires, mm -hmm. because all your creatures are 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 above three. The only cards that you had below three three CMC were just if you had like Aether Gusts. Well, yeah, okay, so right, sure, for sure. I'm gonna go so, like, one. you're because you could still play Bone, Bone Crusher Giant because the CMC is five. You can right. still play. All right, I'm sorry, guys. He's on the next. He's, I'm on the next card. Luris of the Dream Den, Cat Nightmare. This art is great. I'm loving this. This has a real Kamigawa feel to it, doesn't it? Like, you have all these weird, like, or like a Lorwyn field. Like, you have, like, this looks like it would be an elemental in Lorwyn, right? Like, a look like at the little, like look at the little dude snipe. in the back it pooped out. Uh, mm, Rob, we need to explain how reproduction works to you, my dude. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, three mana for a three two with life link, so similar to a three two with vigilance. Each permanent card in your starting deck has a converted mana cost of two or less, similar to converted mana cost of three or greater. Um, during each of your turns, you may cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard. You don't like this one? This card is busted. It's oh, okay. ridiculous. You shake it's, your head, and I think it's bad. Because it's, it's so good. I think it's, it's so good, good in older forms, especially. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just Dark good. Confidant, Death Shadow. Like, you just... No, you're thinking small ball right now. Oh. It's it's an auto-include in... Oh, we're in... talking about Lion's Eye Diamond and shit like that? Like, I don't care yeah. about all that. That doesn't do anything for no. me. I know it doesn't. Cards, cards bonkers. Well, yeah, no, the card is definitely good because of that, for sure. But, like, that's just not, I don't, that's not how I play enjoyable, ma me personally. That's not, like, my in most enjoyable way of magic. Mm -hmm. Are you guys mm -hmm. having, a, what are you guys talking about? She's trying to feed me. Croxa does have a cost of two. Every turn you can just recast Croxa from the graveyard. Oh. Uh, wow. And it's Mardu that keeps you in Mardu as well, which is literally. Wow. Wow. That's interesting. And it lets you still, like, it, it kind of lets you cheat around the, the companion part because you do have a 6-6 six, six in your deck still. You know what I mean? That's interesting. Yeah, that's actually that's really super good. cool, dude. I want to look into that, too. I wish I was writing down all these ideas. I mean, I, I think we can just look over. I think you just rewatch this I'll, I'll, again. It's not a big deal. Yeah, I have time. Yeah, I can do that. Luch <laughs> Luchri the Spell Chaser. We all know what this guy does. 3-2 three, for 3 with Flash. All these guys are 3-2s three for 3. Um, each non-land card in your starting deck has a different name. Ooh, it's like a commander card almost. When Lutri, the spell chaser, enters the battlefield, if you cast it, copy an instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. So, theoretically, if you pay seven for Cruel Ultimatum, you can add three mana to have a second Cruel Ultimatum. Do you not like this card at all, in general? No, no I think. The, the, my problem with it is that you have to cast the spell and then you have to spend three more on top of that to copy it, right? Like, and yeah. if you could copy your opponent's spell, I'd be like, that's cool. Um, because then it's just dual caster mage. Yeah. But dual caster mage outside of the game for free would... I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Already banned commander. Yes, Dennis. That's the joke. <laughs> Obosh, the Prey Piercer. Five mana for a three five. Uh, companion, your starting deck contains only cards with odd converted mana costs and land cards. Interesting. If a source you control with an odd converted mana cost would deal damage to a permanent, it deals double that damage to that player. This is a strong effect. Yeah, it's very strong, but it's also five mana. There have been cards like this before at five mana. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we have Torbrand, which is three mana and basically does the same thing. Yeah. Or four mana, rather. Four mana, yeah. And basically does the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't think it's any good. What did Katie say? I don't think I like copy as a mechanic in general. I feel like it's... I do too. I feel like it's solely dependent on anything you're copying. And, like, I think, honestly, like, maybe, like, two out of every ten spells is worth copying. Because a lot of times it'll be a removal spell, but, like, they only have one no, relevant creature. No more creature targets. Anyway. Right, exactly. They have one relevant creature. Or you're copying your own counter spell to, like, re... Like, it's just... There's so many... Like, it's so... A, to, to copy a thing, has to it has to go well. 
Yeah. Like it's not, it's just not easy. Like for those things to go well, a lot of times. And a lot of the cards that use copy next spell or whatever are bad. Yeah. I agree with you. The cards themselves are because the cost is usually higher than you want to pay. <clears throat> and I'm like, yeah, I guess if I have six mana, I can counter your thing. If you counter it back, I can copy my counter. And counter your like, counter. Right. But it's like the situations are so narrow and like specific. And I don't think Obosh is that good either because he does cost five for a three, five. So companion is a powerful effect but it's only as powerful as what you're limited by i'm reading someone in chat oh not only is it not only that but like you have to the deck restraints are real like not being able to play kroxa in the in the obosh deck because it's an even mana cost is is it's a real thing right like that's a real penalty yeah you know so like yeah i mean i don't know like it's like the, the card, the companion cards have to be better than the cost they're making you pay in deck building because your entire deck is limited by this. Like you can't play the two mana doom yeah, yeah. card. Like yeah. you can't play, you know, Croxa, I guess, you know, like if there's a lot of things you just can't do. Yeah. So you have to have a whole deck full of just one drops, three drops, and basically five drops. So. Yeah. This is no, no bueno. Proud wild bonder. Look at that. This is adorable. Four mana for a four, three with trample creatures. You control with trample have, you may have this creature assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. Hmm. But they still die. Like that one. That's yeah. my biggest problem about this this particular mechanic is that like, all right, I'll block your four four with my four four. Okay, I'll trample over to deal you four, and then you're like, all right, your guy dies, my guy lives now. I'll take four. Yeah. You know, like the situations where this is good is like if you're alphaing and all your guys have trample and you're gonna kill them on the spot. But like, eh, this is bad. Eh, is cat oven odd? Like, doesn't the oven cost two? No, both of them are odd. They're both one. They both cost one. God damn. What Wait, go back to that last card. Go back to Obosk or whatever. Obosk? Obosh? What do, Obosh. Don't be don't be like that. Trail is two. That's true. That's true. Yes, yeah, so, I mean it, it would double up cat oven, but again, it's having to go one, three, five, like that's bad. Does cat deal that's damage not... or is cat life loss though? Oh no, you're right. It's yeah, you're right. It's yeah, it life doesn't even deal so damage. That doesn't matter. Just, no, that doesn't life, even work. Right? Like, I mean, who cares? Yeah. That's Keep dumb. going. Card's dumb. All right, this guy's not good. Sonorous Halbonder. Look at this. These look at these. They got a will wild bonder, Hal Bonder. Two two for three with menace. Each creature you control with menace can't be blocked except by three or more creatures. <sighs> wish it was a three two. I wish it was a two mana card. But I think oh, two mana. I'm two, good with two, that too. Two two with menace for two that makes menace three creatures instead. <laughs> I, this true. card doesn't seem bad though. Three. Yeah. I mean, it's a good way to jam damage through. Like making your menace creatures three three creatures is just making them blockable, right? Like, are there any are there are there any one mana menace creatures? Yes, I'm sure there are. I'm not going to look them up standard? or confirm. I'll let chat do that for us. Let's go. I mean, put it on the list. I think I think it could be playable. I think the ability I know the fact, is strong enough. Yeah, I for I know for a fact you have the two mana two two that draws you extra cards Correct. on your upkeep. That seems pretty darn good. And the, Angrath is a great menace planeswalker, right? Yeah. Uh, Umori, the collector, four mana. This guy doesn't look like it collects anything. This is just a big puddle of shit. Four mana for a four or five. Uh, each non-land card in your starting deck shares a card type. What? So that like your whole deck has to be creatures or sorceries or planeswalkers. Planeswalkers. <laughs> I don't think there's enough in standard. I'll be honest with you. Like what? This is this is no this is no good. As Umori, the collector, enters the battlefield, choose a card type. I'll choose creature. Spells you cast the chosen type cost one less to get. But you're like this comes down on four, so that means your five drop your six drop False. costs five. False. You could be using creatures that have mana, like Paradise Shrew and stuff oh, like that. Wow. And, and and you actually you you add this with um uh Nylea. Not bad. That's no, not that bad. It's still bad. Your whole deck, your all sixty cards are creatures. You get no removal. You get no planeswalkers. You get I don't no get sorceries lands? or instants. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Forty thirty six of your cards are creatures, and you get no variety whatsoever, dude. I got Beast Whisperer, dude. I'm out here drawing cards. It's not going on the list. Yorian Sky Nomad. This is this man, goes on the list. I was thinking four five for five with flying. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, your starting deck contains at least twenty cards more than the minimum deck size. Does it? Eighty card standard deck. I think it's good. Oh, I don't think I think it'll see play in, in um, older formats. When Yorian enters the battlefield, exile any number of other non-land permanents you own and control. Return those cards. To the, oh, it just blinks. 
Yeah, it blinks everything. So you play an eighty card deck, but this this just blinks. Some it stuff? blinks. It blinks everything. Astrolabe. Yeah, but you're playing eighty cards. I don't think anyone wants to play eighty cards. I so about a week ago. Here we go. Um, gather round, ladies and gentlemen. It's Rob's story time. Yeah, hear, hear, hear the hear the tale. Come, come listen. Come listen. hear this tale. Stay a while and down. listen. Shut up in the back. Shut the fuck up. Um, so about a week ago, I don't know why her name is is um, slipping my mind now. Or I, sh- I shouldn't call her a her. She's not a her. Um, Autumn Burchett. Autumn Burchett started um, playing decks in modern. Sure. sure. That were that were over seventy cards because there were because the lands like when you're playing multicolored when you're playing it's so easy to get wait your, minute, like so without Yuri and they were playing they were playing yes before this was even spoiled so they were just they, playing a seventy card deck just normal. They, they were playing seventy and eighty card decks because it was so easy it was so easy to to filter your mana in those formats interesting and and she was having a lot of success with it so it was That's funny that wild. this became spoiled yeah it is it's 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 funny that this became spoiled huh uh and a lot of people i've been reading sam black's one of them that says this is the best he says this is the best companion out of all of them for older formats of course but but i mean like okay so even even beer my man said that this is just like you could just play this without being a companion you could just play in your 60 card deck as normal it's true so. but i think you wouldn't well in standard maybe but not in in uh in um in, in like modern, you just play. Silver I don't. Mode. I don't know, Rob. Flicker Wisp does the same thing, and no one's playing Flicker Wisp, <laughs> Rob. That's false. Fl- Flicker Wisp was played in in modern and legacy. When? Right now? Yeah. Whatever, Robert. I'm gonna go to the next card. Let's Katie it, said, "Nah, I agree with Katie on this. I don't think this card is that good. Like, if this card again is as good as the cards you're blinking." Arkham's Astrolabe, Ice Fang Coatl, Mystic Snake. This doesn't have Flash, man. <laughs> like you're hoping that like the the like they. There's no. I was way just trying to work. make you happy. I was just trying to make you, you happy. I, I, I was trying to sell it to man, you. Man, you knew. You knew. All right, I think that's <laughs> it. No, Zerda the Dawn Waker, three mana for a three three. Last companion, I would assume. I can't imagine there's a another Z card in the fucking set. <laughs> abilities you activate that aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate. This effect can't reduce the mana cost less than one. Mana cost is just, uh, to less than one. Target creature can't block this turn. What do you think about this guy? I don't even. So this goes infinite and standard, right? With um, the the Faber Elder and the Gauntlets, Light Gauntlets. It's just infinite mana. Did someone take an X-ray? <laughs> Dude, I have no fucking idea what either of those cards do. Fabro <laughs> Elders Is that why you're and doing Gauntlets. That? I'm like, what, what do you... No one knows what these cards Fa- are, Rob. Fabro Elder is a three mana, two, three tree folk, I think. <laughs> and- <laughs> Look at this Robbie moment with the bunny ears, man. <laughs> okay, so this the companion is each permanent card in your starting deck has an activated ability. That's hard to do, though. I guess you gotta... Wow. I guess there are a lot of... Um... You could just play Planeswalkers, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, but that does nothing. Planeswalkers, I mean, this it, it doesn't gain anything from this. Right, but no, no, I don't think it's gaining anything, but I'm saying if you want to use this as a companion and you need to fill your deck with cards that have activated abilities, you need to start looking for things that are not creatures because there's you're going to have to put 34 Light cards that have activated In Faber or Elder. Right, okay, that's two. That's two cards. I, I guess now that I think about it, I don't know what I what activated ability I can use my infinite mana on. Right, that's the thing, right? Like this is only as good as the activated abilities you can find, and <laughs> I just don't think it's gonna make the list. I'm See, sorry, John. Get it out of here. Oh, that's it. We finally finished part two. Thank you guys so much for watching. Slam those like and subscribe buttons on YouTube. Let me know what you think of the cards we went over, the crazy predictions Rob had, and. What? Uh, be sure to check out manatraders.com and Cool Stuff Inc. They are great sponsors of the stream. You can find the links and promo codes down below. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching, as always. I really appreciate you guys. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully we can do this again for the next set. Hopefully when I'm in Denver with Katie and Mike, we can all have Rob fly out there and we can do some some live stuff. And 
but this worked pretty well and i think this was actually pretty sweet and this is a good way to to get rob back on the stream so so we uh i I was now that i think about it i think i was lagging in the second half of the stream so hard was because both my kids were on their laptops for doing their schoolwork is what Uh, i think it was that could yeah if they were both on there like that's all three of you guys yeah and i'm streaming and i'm streaming for my phone i ended up turning off my wi-fi on my phone i didn't think about that too but and the phone is so the phone is like uh pull up the twitch chat through like the the yeah yeah i'm watching the whole twitch stream. yeah because you haven't lagged for like the past probably yeah. last last like they've been no, they've minutes, been outside so. they've been outside so yeah that past, actually like, makes a lot of sense yeah all right, sweet. all right wait are we getting off here or is this you shutting Rob, the video dude, off jesus phrasing dude <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, we in off here or what hey man, we're getting off. what do you got there what are you eating there a little little cuban it's a croissant oh sandwich. it's like a, it's like a croissant witch they're called croissant witches rob burger king trademarked them ages ago so are we getting off here, guys? No, not on Twitch, buddy. That's against the terms of service. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Slam those like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you next time. Love you.